The Book of Genesis. Chapter 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness was on the surface of the watery depths. And God's Spirit was hovering over the surface of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. There was evening and there was morning, one day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And it was so. And God made the expanse, and separated the waters which were under the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse. And God called the expanse sky. And God saw that it was good. There was evening and there was morning, a second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered to one gathering, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And the waters under the sky gathered to their gatherings, and the dry land appeared. And God called the dry land earth, and the gatherings of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth produce vegetation, plants yielding seed after its kind, and fruit trees bearing fruit with seed in it after its kind on the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed after its kind, and fruit trees bearing fruit with seed in it after its kind, on the earth. And God saw that it was good. There was evening and there was morning, a third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky for the illumination of the day, to give light on the earth, and to rule the day and the night, and to separate between the day and the night. And let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years, and let them be for lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights. The greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. And the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the sky to shine on the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. There was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let flying creatures fly above the earth in the open expanse of the sky. And it was so. And God created the large sea creatures, and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarmed, after its kind, and every winged flying creature after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the flying creatures multiply on the earth. There was evening and there was morning, a fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures after its kind, tame animals, and crawling creatures, and wild animals of the earth after its kind. And it was so. And God made the wild animals of the earth after its kind, and the tame animals after its kind, and everything that crawls on the ground after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make humankind in our image, after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the flying creatures of the sky, and over the tame animals, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creature that crawls on the earth. And it was so. And God created humankind in his own image. In God's image he created him, male and female he created them. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the flying creatures of the sky, and over all the tame animals, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over all the creatures that crawl on the earth. And God said, Look, I have given you every plant yielding seed, which is on the surface of all the earth, and every tree, which bears fruit yielding seed, it will be your food. And to every wild animal of the earth, and to every tame animal of the earth, and to every flying creature of the sky, and to every creature that crawls on the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green plant for food. And God saw everything that he had made, and look, it was very good. There was evening and there was morning, a sixth day. Chapter 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their vast array. And on the sixth day God finished his works which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his works which he had made. So God blessed the seventh day, and made it holy, because he rested on it from all his works which God had created and made. This is the account of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, at the time when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no plant of the field had yet sprouted, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there were no people to cultivate the ground, 
But springs came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. And the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward, in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree to grow that is pleasant to the sight, and good for food, the tree of life also in the middle of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it separated and became the source of four rivers. The name of the first is Pishon, this is the one which goes around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. There is aromatic resin in the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gahon, it goes around the whole land of Cush. And the name of the third river is Hittikel, this is the one which flows east of Asher. And the fourth river is the Parath. And the Lord God took the man, and put him into the garden of Eden to cultivate it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it, for in the day that you eat of it you will surely die. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone, I will make him a helper suitable for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every tame animal, and every wild animal, and every flying creature of the sky, and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. And the man gave names to all the tame animals, and to all the flying creatures of the sky, and to every wild animal, but for Adam there was not found a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on the man, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh at that place. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he fashioned into a woman and brought her to the man. And the man said, This at last is bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman, because this one was taken out of man. Therefore a man will leave his father and his mother, and will join with his wife, and the two will become one flesh. And they were both naked the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Chapter 3 Now the serpent was more shrewd than any of the wild animals which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God really said, You shall not eat of any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, Of the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, You won't surely die? For God knows that in the day you eat it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit, and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. The eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden during the breeze of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The Lord God called to the man, and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, so I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. The Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above every tame animal, and above every wild animal. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your pain in childbirth. In pain you will bring forth children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam he said, Because you have listened to your wife's voice, and have eaten of the tree, of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns also and thistles will it bring forth to you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face will you eat bread until you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you were dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all living. The Lord God made clothing out of skins for Adam and for his wife, and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Look, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. So now, let us send him out, 
lest he reach out his hand and also take of the tree of life and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden, to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he stationed the cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every direction, to guard the way to the tree of life. Chapter 4 Now Adam had marital relations with his wife Eve, and she conceived, and gave birth to Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from God. Again she gave birth, to Cain's brother Abel. Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. As time passed, it happened that Cain brought an offering to the Lord from the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought some of the firstborn of his flock and of its fat. And God looked favorably on Abel and his offering, but he did not look favorably on Cain and his offering. Cain was very angry, and the expression on his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why has the expression of your face fallen? If you do well, will it not be lifted up? If you do not do well, sin lies in wait at the door. It desires to control you, but you must rule over it. Cain said to Abel, his brother, let's go into the field. It happened when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. Then God said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And God said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed because of the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. From now on, when you till the ground, it won't yield its strength to you. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer in the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Look, you have driven me out this day from the surface of the ground. I will be hidden from your face, and I will be a fugitive and a wanderer in the earth. It will happen that whoever finds me will kill me. The Lord said to him, Not so. Whoever kills Cain vengeance will be taken on him sevenfold. The Lord appointed a sign for Cain, lest any finding him should strike him. Cain went out from God's presence, and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain had marital relations with his wife, and she conceived and gave birth to Enoch. He built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son, Enoch. To Enoch was born Arad, and Arad became the father of Mahijal, and Mahijal became the father of Methusel, and Methusel became the father of Lamech. Lamech took two wives, the name of the one was Ada and the name of the other Zillah. Adah gave birth to Jabal, who was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal, who was the father of all who play the harp and flute. Zillah also gave birth to Tubal-Cain, who heated metal and shaped instruments of bronze and iron. Tubal-Cain's sister was Nama. Lamech said to his wives, Adah and Zillah, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, listen to my speech, for I have slain a man for wounding me a young man for bruising me. If Cain will be avenged seven times, truly Lamech seventy-seven times. Adam had marital relations with his wife again, and she gave birth to a son, and named him Seth, for God has appointed me another child instead of Abel, for Cain killed him. And a son was also born to Seth, and he named him Enosh. This one began to call on the Lord's name. Chapter 5. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created humankind, he made him in God's likeness. He created them male and female, and blessed them, and called their name humankind on the day when they were created. Adam lived 230 years, and became the father of a son in his own likeness, after his image, and named him Seth. The days of Adam after he became the father of Seth were 700 years, and he became the father of sons and daughters. All the days that Adam lived were 930 years, then he died. Seth lived 205 years, and became the father of Enosh. Seth lived after he became the father of Enosh 707 years, and fathered sons and daughters. All the days of Seth were 912 years, then he died. Enosh lived 190 years, and became the father of Kenan. Enosh lived after he became the father of Kenan, 715 years, and fathered sons and daughters. All the days of Enosh were 905 years, then he died. Kenan lived 170 years, and became the father of Mahalalel. Kenan lived after he became the father of Mahalalel 740 years, and fathered sons and daughters in all the days of Kenan were 910 years, then he died. Mahalalel lived 165 years, and became the father of Jared. Mahalalel lived after he became the father of Jared 730 years, 
and fathered sons and daughters. All the days of Mahalala were 895 years, then he died. Jared lived 162 years, and became the father of Enoch. Jared lived after he became the father of Enoch 800 years, and fathered sons and daughters. All the days of Jared were 962 years, then he died. Enoch lived 165 years, and became the father of Methuselah. Enoch walked with God after he became the father of Methuselah 200 years, and fathered sons and daughters. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. Enoch walked with God, and then he was not there, for God took him. Methuselah lived 187 years, and became the father of Lamech. Methuselah lived after he became the father of Lamech 782 years, and fathered sons and daughters. All the days of Methuselah were 969 years, then he died. Lamech lived 182 years, and became the father of a son, and he named him Noah, saying, This one will comfort us in our labor and in the hard work of our hands, because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. Lamech lived after he became the father of Noah 595 years, and fathered sons and daughters. All the days of Lamech were 777 years, then he died. Noah was 500 years old, and Noah became the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Chapter 6. And it happened, when mankind began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, that God's sons saw that the daughters of humankind were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. The Lord said, My spirit will not remain in humankind forever, since he is indeed flesh, yet his days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also after that. When the sons of God had sexual relations with the daughters of humankind and had children by them, they were the mighty men who were from ancient times, famous men. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. God was sorry that he had made humankind on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. God said, I will destroy humankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, humankind, along with animals, creeping things and birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them, but Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. Noah walked with God. Noah became the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. God saw the earth, and look, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And look, I will destroy them with the earth. Make a box-shaped vessel of gopher wood. You are to make rooms in the vessel, and cover it inside and outside with pitch. And this is how you are to make it. The length of the vessel is to be 517 feet, its breadth 86 feet, and its height 52 feet. And you are to make a roof in the vessel and you are to finish it twenty-one inches above. And you are to set the door of the vessel in its side. You are to make it with lower, second, and third levels. And as for me, look, I am bringing a flood of waters on the earth, to destroy all flesh having the breath of life from under the sky. Everything that is on the earth will die. But I will establish my covenant with you. You are to come into the vessel, you, your sons, your wife, and your son's wives with you. Of every living thing of all flesh, you are to bring two of every sort into the vessel, to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of the flying creatures after their kind, of the animals after their kind, and of every crawling creature of the ground after their kind, two of every sort shall come to you, to keep them alive. And as for you, take for yourself all the kinds of food that are eaten, and gather it to yourself, and it will be food for you, and for them. Thus Noah did. According to all that God commanded him, so he did. Chapter 7. And the Lord said to Noah, Come with all of your household into the vessel, for I have seen your righteousness before me in this generation. You shall take seven pairs of every clean animal with you, the male and his female. Of the animals that are not clean, take two, the male and his female. Also of the clean birds of the sky, seven pairs, a male and a female, and of all the unclean birds, one pair, a male and a female to preserve their offspring on the surface of all the earth. In seven days, I will cause it to rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights. Every living thing that I have made, I will destroy from the surface of the ground. Noah did everything that the Lord commanded him. 
Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of waters came on the earth. Noah went into the vessel with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives, because of the waters of the flood. Clean animals, animals that are not clean, birds, and everything that creeps on the ground went by pairs to Noah into the vessel, male and female, as God commanded Noah. It happened after the seven days, that the waters of the flood came on the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on the same day all the fountains of the great deep were burst open, and the floodgates of the sky were opened. The rain was on the earth forty days and forty nights. In the same day Noah, and Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Noah, and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them, entered into the vessel, they, and every wild animal after its kind, and every tame animal after their kind, every creature that crawls on the earth after its kind, and every flying creature after its kind, everything with wings. They went to Noah into the vessel, by pairs of all flesh with the breath of life in them. Those who went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood was forty days on the earth. The waters increased, and lifted up the vessel, and it was lifted up above the earth. The waters prevailed, and increased greatly on the earth, and the vessel floated on the surface of the waters. And the waters rose very high on the earth. And all the high mountains that were under the whole sky were covered. The waters rose and covered the highest mountains to a depth of more than twenty-six feet. All flesh died that moved on the earth, including birds, livestock, animals, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every man. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds, and livestock and wild animals, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and all humankind. All in whose nostrils breathed the breath of life, of all that was on the dry land, died. Every living thing was destroyed that was on the surface of the ground, including man, animals, crawling creatures, and flying creatures of the sky. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah was left, and those who were with him in the vessel. The waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. Chapter 8 and God remembered Noah, and all the wild animals, and all the tame animals, and all the flying creatures, and all the crawling creatures that were with him in the vessel, and God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters began to recede. And the fountains of the deep and the floodgates of the sky were closed, and the rain from the sky was restrained. And the waters receded steadily from the land. And after the end of 150 days the waters had decreased significantly. And in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the vessel came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters receded continually to the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains became visible. It happened at the end of forty days, that Noah opened the window of the vessel which he had made, and he sent forth a raven. It went back and forth, until the waters had dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from it, to see if the waters had abated from the surface of the ground, but the dove found no place to rest her foot and she returned to him into the vessel, for the waters were on the surface of the whole earth. He put forth his hand, and took her, and brought her to him into the vessel. And he waited yet another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the vessel. The dove came back to him at evening, and, look, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters had abated from the earth. He stayed yet another seven days, and sent forth the dove, and she did not return to him any more. And it happened in the six hundred first year of Noah's life, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters had dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the vessel and looked out. And look, the surface of the ground was dry. In the second month, on the twenty-seventh day of the month, the earth was dry. God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the vessel, you, and your wife, and your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you of all flesh of flying creatures, and animals, and every creature that crawls on the earth, that they may swarm on the earth, and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. And Noah went forth, with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives with him, and every wild animal, and every tame animal, and every flying creature, and every creature that crawls on the earth, after their families, went out of the vessel. Noah built an altar to God, and took of every clean animal, and of every clean flying creature, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, and the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of humankind, nor will I again destroy every living thing, as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, 
and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Chapter 9 God blessed Noah and his sons, and said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you will be on every wild animal of the earth, and on every tame animal of the earth, and on every flying creature of the sky, and on everything that crawls on the ground, and on all the fish of the sea, into your power they are given. Every moving thing that lives will be food for you. As I gave the green plants, I now give you everything, but flesh with its life, its blood, you shall not eat. And surely I will require a reckoning for your lifeblood, from every animal I will require it, and from humans. From every human being I will require it for the life of his fellow human being. Whoever takes a human life, by a human will his life be taken, for God made humankind in his own image. Be fruitful and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply in it. God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And as for me, look, I establish my covenant with you and with your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, and the livestock, and every animal of the earth with you, of all that go out of the vessel, even every living creature of the earth. I will establish my covenant with you, and all flesh will never again be cut off by the waters of the flood, neither will there ever again be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you, for perpetual generations. I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. It will happen, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the rainbow will be seen in the cloud, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters will no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. The rainbow will be in the cloud. I will look at it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between me and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah. This is the sign of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The sons of Noah who came out of the vessel were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham is the father of Canaan. These were the three sons of Noah, and from them the whole earth was populated. Noah, a farmer, was the first to plant a vineyard. He drank of the wine and got drunk. He was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father naked and told his two brothers outside. Shem and Japheth took a garment, and laid it on both their shoulders, went in backwards, and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned the other way, and they did not see their father's nakedness. Noah woke from his wine, and knew what his youngest son had done to him. He said, Canaan is cursed. He will be servant of servants to his brothers. He said, Blessed be the God of Shem. Let Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth. Let him dwell in the tents of Shem. Let Canaan be his servant. Noah lived 350 years after the flood. All the days of Noah were 950 years, then he died. Chapter 10 Now this is the history of the generations of the sons of Noah and of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Sons were born to them after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tyrus. The sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Riphath and Togarma. The sons of Javan, Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Rodanim. From these, the coastlands of the nation separated into their territories, every one according to its language, according to their families, in their nations. The sons of Ham, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. The sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Raama, and Sabteca. The sons of Raama, Sheba and Dedan. Cush became the father of Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one on the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before God. And the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kalna, in the land of Shinar. Out of that land he went forth into Assyria, and built Nineveh, and Rehobothir, and Kala, and Rezan, between Nineveh and the great city of Kala. And Mizraim became the father of Ludim, and Anamim, and Lahabim, and Naphtahim, and Pathrusim, and Kasluhim, which the Philistines descended from, and Kaphtarim. And Canaan became the father of Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites, and the Girgashites, and the Hivites, and the Archites, and the Sinites, and the Arvadites, and the Zemorites, and the Hamathites. Afterward the families of the Canaanites were spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as you go toward Gerar, to Gaza, 
as you go toward Sodom, and Gomorrah, and Adma, and Zeboim, to Lasha. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their languages, in their lands, in their nations. To Shem, the father of all the children of Eber, the elder brother of Japheth, to him also were children born. The sons of Shem, Elam, and Ashur, and Arpachshad, and Lud, and Aram. The sons of Aram, Az, and Huli, and Gether, and Mash. And Arpachshad became the father of Kenan, and Kenan became the father of Shelah. And Shelah became the father of Eber. Two Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided. His brother's name was Joktan. And Joktan became the father of Almodad, and Shelef, and Hazarm of Eth, and Jera, and Hadoram, and Duzil, and Dekla, and Obal, and Abimael, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the sons of Joktan. Their dwelling was from Asia, as you go toward Sefer, the mountain of the east. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their languages, in their lands, after their nations. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations, and from these the nations branched out on the earth after the flood. Chapter 11 The whole earth was of one language and of one speech. It happened, as they traveled from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks, and burn them thoroughly. They had brick for stone, and they used tar for mortar. They said, Come, let us build ourselves a city, and a tower whose top reaches to the sky, and let us make ourselves a name, lest we be scattered abroad on the surface of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower, that humankind was building. The Lord said, Look, they are one people, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. So now nothing which they plan to do will be too difficult for them. Come, let us go down, and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Then the Lord scattered them abroad from there on the surface of all the earth, so they ceased building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and became the father of Arpachshad two years after the flood. Shem lived 500 years after he became the father of Arpachshad, and fathered sons and daughters. And Arpachshad lived 135 years and became the father of Kenan. And Arpachshad lived 430 years after he became the father of Kenan, and fathered sons and daughters. And Kenan lived 130 years and became the father of Shelah. And Kenan lived 330 years after he had become the father of Shelah, and fathered sons and daughters. Shelah lived 130 years, and became the father of Eber, and Shelah lived 403 years after he became the father of Eber, and fathered sons and daughters. Eber lived 134 years, and became the father of Peleg. Eber lived 370 years after he became the father of Peleg, and fathered sons and daughters. Peleg lived 130 years and became the father of Ru. Peleg lived 209 years after he became the father of Ru, and fathered sons and daughters. Ru lived 132 years, and became the father of Sarug. Ru lived 207 years after he became the father of Sarug, and fathered sons and daughters. Sarug lived 130 years, and became the father of Nahor. Sarug lived 200 years after he became the father of Nahor, and fathered sons and daughters. Nahor lived 79 years, and became the father of Terah. Nahor lived 129 years after he became the father of Terah, and fathered sons and daughters. Terah lived 70 years, and became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran became the father of Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in the land of his birth, in Urkazdim. And Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milka, the daughter of Haran who was also the father of Iscah. And Sarai was barren. She had no child. And Terah took Abram his son, Lot the son of Haran, his grandson, and Sarai his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and with him he set out from Merkazdom to go into the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. And the days of Terah were two hundred five years. And Terah died in Haran. Chapter 12. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Go out from your country, 
and from your relatives, and from your father's house, to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great. And you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who treat you with contempt, and through you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So Abram left, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took Sarai his wife, Lot his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had accumulated, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they left to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to the land of Canaan, and Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, to the oak of Mori. At that time the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I will give this land to your offspring. He built an altar there to the Lord, who appeared to him. He left from there to the mountain on the east of Bethel, and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west, and I on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. And Abram traveled on, continuing toward the Negev. There was a famine in the land, so Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, because the famine was severe in the land. It happened, when he had come near to enter Egypt, that he said to Sarai his wife, Look, I know what a beautiful woman you are. It will happen, when the Egyptians will see you, that they will say, This is his wife. And they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say that you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and that my soul may live because of you. It happened that when Abram had come into Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. The princes of Pharaoh saw her, and praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into the household of Pharaoh. He dealt well with Abram for her sake, and he acquired sheep, cattle, male donkeys, male servants, female servants, female donkeys, and camels. But God plagued Pharaoh and his house with great and grievous plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Pharaoh summoned Abram and said, What is this that you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? Why did you say, She is my sister, so that I took her to be my wife? Now therefore, look, your wife is before you. Take, and go. Pharaoh commanded men concerning him, and they sent him away with his wife and all his possessions. Chapter 13 Abram went up out of Egypt, he, his wife, and all his possessions, and lot with him, into the Negev. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. He went on his journeys from the Negev even to Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and I, to the place where he had first built the altar. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Lot also, who went with Abram, had flocks, and herds, and tents. The land was not able to support them while they stayed together, for they had so many possessions that they were unable to remain together. There was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite lived in the land at that time. Abram said to Lot, Please, let there be no strife between me and you, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are relatives. Isn't the whole land before you? Please separate yourself from me. If you go to the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you go to the right hand, then I will go to the left. Lot lifted up his eyes, and saw all the plain of the Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere, like the garden of God, like the land of Egypt, in the direction of Zoar. This was before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, so Lot chose the plain of the Jordan for himself. Lot traveled east, and they separated from each other. Abram lived in the land of Canaan, and Lot lived in the cities of the plain, and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the people of Sodom were evil, sinning greatly against God. And God said to Abram after Lot had departed from him, Now, lift up your eyes, and look from the place where you are, northward and southward and eastward and westward, for all the land which you see I will give to you and to your offspring forever. I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, then your offspring also could be counted. Arise, walk through the land in its length and in its breadth, for I will give it to you. Abram moved his tent, and came and lived by the oaks of Mamre, which are in Hebron, and built an altar there to the Lord. Chapter 14 It happened in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Ariok, king of Elisar, Keterleomer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of Goyim, that they made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, and Shemeber, king of Zebuim, and the king of Bela that is, Zoar. All these joined together in the valley of Siddim, 
that is, the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Ketelaomer, and in the thirteenth year, they rebelled. In the fourteenth year, Ketelaomer and the kings allied with him came and attacked the Rephaim in Ashtaroth Karnaim, and the Zuzim in Ham, and the Emim in Shavak Erithaim, and the Harite, in the hills of Seir, to El Paran, which is near the desert. They returned, and came to an Mishpat, that is, Kadesh, and attacked all the country of the Amalekites, and also the Amorites, that lived in Hazes on Tamar. The king of Sodom, and the king of Gomorrah, and the king of Adma, and the king of Zeboim, and the king of Bela, that is, Zoar, came out, and they took up battle positions in the valley of Siddim against Kedarlaomer king of Elam, and Tidal king of Goyim, and Amraphel king of Shinar, and Ariok king of Elisar, four kings against the five. Now the valley of Siddim was full of tar pits, and the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah fled, and they fell there, and those who remained fled to the hills. They took all the possessions of Sodom and Gomorrah, and all their food, and left. They also took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who lived in Sodom, and his possessions, and departed. One who had escaped came and told Abram, the Hebrew. Now he lived by the oaks of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, and brother of Aner, and these were allies of Abram. When Abram heard that his relative was taken captive, he mobilized his trained men, born in his house. 318, and pursued as far as Dan. He divided his forces against them at night, he and his servants, and attacked them, and pursued them to Hobah, which is north of Damascus. He brought back all the possessions, and also brought back his relative, Lot, and his possessions, as well as the women and the other people. The king of Sodom went out to meet him, after his return from the defeat of Ketelaomer and the kings who were with him, at the valley of Shaveh, that is, the king's valley. Melchizedek king of Salem brought out bread and wine, now he was priest of God Most High. He blessed him, and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, maker of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tenth of everything. Now the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the people, and take the possessions for yourself. Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand to God Most High, maker of heaven and earth that I will not take a thread nor a sandal strap nor anything that is yours, lest you should say, I have made Abram rich. I will accept nothing from you except that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men who went with me, Aner, Eshkol, and Mamre. Let them take their portion. Chapter 15 After these things the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your reward will be very great. And Abram said, Lord, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? Then Abram said, Look, to me you have given no offspring, and, look, one born in my house is my heir. And look, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This man will not be your heir, but he who will come forth out of your own body will be your heir. And he brought him outside, and said, Look now toward the sky, and count the stars, if you are able to count them. And he said to him, So will your descendants be. And he believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he said to him, I am God, who brought you out of Urkazdom to give you this land to possess. But he said, Lord, how can I know that I will possess it? And he said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all of these, and divided them in the middle, and placed each half opposite the other but he did not divide the birds. And the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. When the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell on Abram. And look, a terror of great darkness fell on him. And he said to Abram, Know for certain that your descendants will live as foreigners in a land that is not theirs, and they will be enslaved there. And they will oppress them four hundred years. But I will also judge that nation whom they will serve. And afterward they will come out with many possessions but you will go to your fathers in peace. You will be buried in a good old age. In the fourth generation they will come here again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. It came to pass that, when the sun went down, and it was dark, look, a smoking firepot and a flaming torch passed between these pieces. On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I have given this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Perath, the land of, the Kenites the Kentsites, the Kadmonites, the Hittites, 
the Perizzites, the Rephaim, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. Chapter 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bore him no children, but she had an Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. Sarai said to Abram, Look now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing. Please go into my servant. It may be that I will obtain children by her. Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. So Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her servant, after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to Abram her husband to be his wife. He slept with Hagar, and she conceived. When she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Sarai said to Abram, This wrong is your fault. I gave my servant into your bosom, and when she saw that she had conceived, she despised me. God judge between me and you. But Abram said to Sarai, Look, your servant is in your hand. Do to her whatever is good in your sight. Sarai dealt harshly with her, so she fled from her presence. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the desert, by the spring on the way to Shur. He said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where did you come from, where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress, and submit yourself to her authority. The angel of the Lord said to her, I will greatly multiply your descendants, so that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord said to her, Look, you are with child, and will bear a son. You are to name him Ishmael, because God has heard your affliction, he will be like a wild donkey among men. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he will live away from all of his brothers. She called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, Urlroi, for she said, Here I have seen the one who sees me therefore the well was called Birlaha Eroi. Look, it is between Kadesh and Bered. Hagar bore a son for Abram. Abram called the name of his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was eighty-six years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. Chapter 17. When Abram was ninety-nine years old, the Lord appeared to Abram, and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me, and be blameless. I will make my covenant between me and you, and will multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell face down, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, look, my covenant is with you. You will be the father of a multitude of nations. Neither will your name any more be called Abram, but your name will be Abraham for I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you. Kings will come out of you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your descendants after you. I will give to you, and to your descendants after you, the land of your sojournings, all the land of Canaan, for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. God said to Abraham, As for you, you are to keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. This is my covenant, which you shall keep, between me and you and your descendants after you, every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin, it will be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old will be circumcised among you, every male throughout your generations, he who is born in the house, or bought with money from any foreigner who is not of your descendants. He who is born in your house, and he who is bought with your money, must be circumcised. My covenant will be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised male who is not circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin on the eighth day, that person shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but her name will be Sarah. And I will bless her, and moreover I will give you a son by her. And I will bless her and she will be a mother of nations, kings of peoples will come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face, and laughed, and said in his heart, Will a child be born to him who is one hundred years old? Will Sarah, who is ninety years old, give birth? Abraham said to God, Oh that Ishmael might live before you. And God said, Truly, Sarah your wife will bear you a son, and you are to name him Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Look, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. He will become the father of twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I establish with Isaac, 
whom Sarah will bear to you at this set time next year. When he finished talking with him, God went up from Abraham. Abraham took Ishmael his son, all who were born in his house, and all who were bought with his money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the same day, as God had said to him. Abraham was ninety-nine years old, when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Ishmael, his son, was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the same day both Abraham and Ishmael, his son, were circumcised. All the men of his house, those born in the house, and those bought with money from a foreigner, were circumcised with him. Chapter 18 And God appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the entrace to the tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and saw that three men stood opposite him. When he saw them, he ran to meet them from the entrance of the tent, and bowed himself to the earth, and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, please do not go on past your servant. Now let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. I will get a bit of food so you may refresh yourselves. After that you may go your way, now that you have come to your servant. They said, Very well, do as you have said. Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah, and said, Quickly, get three measures of fine flour, knead it, and make bread. Abraham ran to the herd, and took a tender and good calf, and gave it to the servant, and he hurried to prepare it. He took curds, milk, and the calf that he had prepared, and set it before them. He stood by them under the tree, and they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? He said, See, in the tent. Then he said, I will certainly return to you at the time of life. Look. Sarah your wife will have a son. Sarah heard from the entrance of the tent, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age. Sarah was past the age of childbearing. Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old will I have pleasure, my husband being old also? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Will I really bear a child when I am old? Is anything too difficult for God? At the set time I will return to you at the time of life, and Sarah will have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, No, but you did laugh. The men rose up from there, and looked toward Sodom. Abraham went with them to see them on their way. And the Lord said, Will I hide from Abraham what I am about to do, seeing that Abraham will surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him? For I have made myself known to him so that he may command his children and his household after him, that they may keep the way of the Lord, to do righteousness and justice, so that God may bring to Abraham that which he has spoken to him. The Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is so grievous, I will go down now, and see whether they have done entirely according to the outcry which has come to me. And if not, I will know. The men turned from there, and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Abraham drew near, and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous within the city? Will you sweep it away and not spare the place for the fifty righteous who are in it? Be it far from you to do things like that, to kill the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be like the wicked. May that be far from you. Shouldn't the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sake. Abraham answered, Look, I have taken it on myself to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes. What if there will lack five of the fifty righteous? Will you destroy all the city for lack of five? He said, I will not destroy it, if I find forty-five there. He spoke to him yet again, and said, What if there are forty found there? He said, I will not do it for the forty's sake. He said, Oh do not let the Lord be angry, and I will speak. What if there are thirty found there? He said, I will not do it, if I find thirty there. He said, Look, I have taken it on myself to speak to the Lord. What if there are twenty found there? He said, I will not destroy it for the twenty's sake. He said, Oh do not let the Lord be angry, and I will speak just once more. What if ten are found there? He said, I will not destroy it for the ten's sake. The Lord went his way, as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Chapter 19. The two angels came to Sodom at evening. Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Lot saw them, and rose up to meet them. 
he bowed himself with his face to the earth, and he said, See now, my lords, please turn aside into your servant's house, and stay all night, and wash your feet, then you may rise up early, and go on your way. They said, No, but we will stay in the street all night, but he urged them so strongly that they came in with him, and entered into his house. He made them a feast, and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they could lie down to sleep, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, surrounded the house, both young and old, all the people from every quarter. They called to Lot, and said to him, Where are the men who came into you this night? Bring them out to us, that we may have sex with them. Lot went out to them at the entrance, and shut the door behind him. He said, Please, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Look, I have two virgin daughters. Please let me bring them out to you, and you may do to them what seems good to you. Only do not do anything to these men, because they have come under the protection of my roof. They said, Stand back. They said, This one fellow came in to live as a foreigner, and he appoints himself a judge. Now will we deal worse with you, than with them. They pressed hard on the man Lot, and drew near to break the door. But the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house to them, and shut the door. They struck the men who were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great so that they were unable to find the door. The men said to Lot, Do you have anybody else here? Sons-in-law, your sons, your daughters, and whoever you have in the city, bring them out of the place, for we will destroy this place, because the outcry against them has grown great before God that he has sent us to destroy it. Lot went out, and spoke to his sons-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughters, and said, Get up! Get out of this place! for God will destroy the city, but he seemed to his sons-in-law to be joking. When the morning came, then the angels hurried Lot along, saying, Get up! Take your wife, and your two daughters who are here, and get out, lest you be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he hesitated, so the men grabbed his hand, his wife's hand, and his two daughters' hands, the Lord being merciful to him, and they took him out, and set him outside of the city. It came to pass, when they had taken them out, that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind you, and do not stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountains, or you will be swept away. Lot said to them, Oh, not so, my lord. See now, your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have magnified your loving kindness, which you have shown to me in saving my life. I can't escape to the mountain, lest the disaster overtake me, and I die. See now, this city is near to flee to, and it is a little one. Let me escape there isn't it a little one? And my life will be saved. He said to him, Look, I have granted your request concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, for I can't do anything until you get there. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun had risen on the earth when Lot came to Zoar. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and on Gomorrah sulfur and fire from the Lord out of the sky. He overthrew those cities, and all the plain, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and that which grew on the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the plain, and he saw, and look, the smoke was rising from the land like smoke from a furnace. It happened, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham, and sent Lot out of the middle of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot lived. Lot went up out of Zoar, and lived in the mountain, and his two daughters with him, for he was afraid to live in Zoar. He lived in a cave with his two daughters. The firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old and there is not a man in the land to sleep with us according to the custom of all the land. Come, let's make our father drink wine, and we will sleep with him, that we may preserve our family through our father. They made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in, and slept with her father. He did not know when she lay down, nor when she arose. It came to pass on the next day, that the firstborn said to the younger, Look, I slept last night with my father. Let us make him drink wine again tonight. You go in, and sleep with him, that we may preserve our family through our father. They made their father drink wine that night also. The younger went and slept with him. He did not know when she lay down, nor when she got up. Thus both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The firstborn bore a son, and named him Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. The younger also bore a son, 
and called his name Ben-Ami. He is the father of the children of Ammon to this day. Chapter 20 Abraham traveled from there toward the land of the Negev, and lived between Kadesh and Shur. He lived as a foreigner in Gerar. Abraham said about Sarah his wife, She is my sister. Abimelech king of Gerar sent, and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream of the night, and said to him, Look, you are a dead man, because of the woman whom you have taken. For she is a man's wife. Now Abimelech had not come near her. He said, Lord, will you kill even a righteous nation? Did not he tell me, she is my sister? She, even she herself, said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands have I done this. God said to him in the dream, Yes, I know that in the integrity of your heart you have done this, and I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore I did not allow you to touch her. Now therefore, restore the man's wife. For he is a prophet, and he will pray for you, and you will live. If you do not restore her, know for sure that you will die, you, and all who were yours. Abimelech rose early in the morning, and called all his servants, and told all these things in their ear. The men were very scared. Then Abimelech called Abraham, and said to him, What have you done to us? How have I sinned against you, that you have brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? You have done deeds to me that ought not to be done. Abimelech said to Abraham, What were you thinking, to do this thing? Abraham said, Because I thought, Surely the fear of God is not in this place, so they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she is indeed my sister, the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. It happened, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said to her, This is your kindness which you shall show to me. Everywhere that we go, say of me, he is my brother. Abimelech took sheep and cattle, male servants and female servants, and gave them to Abraham and restored Sarah, his wife, to him. Abimelech said, Look, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. To Sarah he said, Look, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. Look, it is to cover the offense against you before all who are with you. In front of all you are vindicated. Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, and his wife, and his female servants, and they bore children. For God had made every woman infertile in the household of Abimelech, because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Chapter 21 The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had spoken. Sarah conceived, and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham called his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Abraham circumcised his son, Isaac, when he was eight days old as God had commanded him. Abraham was one hundred years old when his son, Isaac, was born to him. Sarah said, God has made me laugh. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. She said, Who would have said to Abraham, that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. The child grew, and was weaned. Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, mocking. Therefore she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman and her son. For the son of this slave woman will not be heir with my son, Isaac. The thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight on account of his son. God said to Abraham, Do not let it be grievous in your sight because of the boy, and because of your slave woman. In all that Sarah says to you, listen to her voice. For from Isaac will your descendants be called. And I will also make a great nation of the son of the slave woman, because he is your offspring. Abraham rose up early in the morning, and took food and a skin of water, and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, and gave her the child, and sent her away. She departed, and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. The water in the skin was gone, and she shoved the boy under one of the shrubs. She went and sat down opposite him, a good way off, about a bow shot away. For she said, Do not let me see the death of the boy. So she sat across from him, and he wept loudly. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from the sky and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid. For God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Get up, lift up the boy, and hold him by your hand. For I will make him a great nation. God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy, and he grew. He lived in the wilderness, 
and became, as he grew up, an archer. He lived in the wilderness of Paran. His mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. It happened at that time, that Abimelech and Fickle the captain of his army spoke to Abraham, saying, God is with you in all that you do. Now, therefore, swear to me here by God that you will not deal falsely with me, nor with my son, nor with my son's son. But according to the kindness that I have done to you, you shall do to me, and to the land in which you have lived as a foreigner. And Abraham said, I swear. Abraham complained to Abimelech because of a water well, which Abimelech's servants had violently taken away. Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing. Neither did you tell me, neither did I hear of it, until today. Abraham took sheep and cattle, and gave them to Abimelech, and the two of them made a covenant. Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. Abimelech said to Abraham, What do these seven ewe lambs which you have set by themselves mean? He said, You shall take these seven ewe lambs from my hand, that it may be a witness to me, that I have dug this well. Therefore he called that place Beersheba, because they both swore there. So they made a covenant at Beersheba. Abimelech rose up with Fickle, the commander of his army, and they returned into the land of the Philistines. And Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Abraham lived as a foreigner in the land of the Philistines many days. Chapter 22 It happened after these things, that God tested Abraham, and said to him, Abraham, Abraham. He said, Here I am. He said, Now take your son, your only one, whom you love, even Isaac, and go into the land of Moriah. Offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will tell you of. Abraham rose early in the morning, and saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. He split the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up, and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place far off. Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there, and we will worship, and come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. He took in his hand the fire and the knife. They both went together. Isaac spoke to Abraham his father, and said, My father? He said, Here I am, my son. He said, Here is the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they both went together. They came to the place which God had told him of. Abraham built the altar there, and laid the wood in order, bound Isaac his son, and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Abraham reached out his hand, and took the knife to kill his son. The angel of the Lord called to him out of the sky, and said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy, neither do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only one, for me. And Abraham looked up and saw a single ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Abraham called the name of that place Elohim Uray. As it is said to this day, on the mountain, God will provide. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of the sky, and said, I have sworn by myself, says the Lord, because you have done this thing, and have not withheld your son, your only one, from me, I will indeed bless you, and I will greatly multiply your offspring like the stars of the sky and like the sand which is on the seashore, and your offspring will possess the gate of their enemies. And through your offspring all the nations of the earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. Abraham lived at Beersheba. It happened after these things, that it was told Abraham, saying, Look, Milcah also has borne children to your brother Nahor, Uz his firstborn, Buz his brother, Kemuel the father of Aram. Kest, Hazo, Pildash, Jedloth, and Betuel. Betuel became the father of Rebekah. These eight meal Kabor to Nahor, Abraham's brother. His secondary wife, whose name was Ruma, also bore Teba, Gaim, Tehash, and Maka. Chapter 23. Sarah lived 127 years. This was the length of Sarah's life. Sarah died in Kiriath Arba, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan. Abraham came to mourn for Sarah, and to weep for her. Abraham rose up from before his dead, and spoke to the sons of Heth, 
saying, I am a stranger and a foreigner living with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you, that I may remove my dead for burial. The sons of Heth answered Abraham, saying to him, Hear us, my lord. You are a prince of God among us. Bury your dead in the best of our tombs. None of us will withhold from you his tomb to prevent you from burying your dead. Abraham rose up, and bowed himself to the people of the land, to the sons of Heth. He talked with them, saying, If you agree that I may remove my dead for burial, hear me, and approach Ephron the son of Zohar for me, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he owns, it is at the end of his field. For the full price let him give it to me in your presence as a burial place. Now Ephron was sitting among the sons of Heth. Ephron the Hethite answered Abraham in the hearing of the sons of Heth, even of all who went in at the gate of his city, saying, No, my lord, hear me. I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it. In the presence of the sons of my people I give it to you. Bury your dead. Abraham bowed himself down before the people of the land. He spoke to Ephron in the audience of the people of the land, saying, But if you will, please hear me. I will give the price of the field. Take it from me, and I will bury my dead there. Ephron answered Abraham, saying to him, My lord, listen to me. What is a piece of land worth four hundred shekels of silver between me and you? Therefore bury your dead. Abraham listened to Ephron. Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver which he had named in the audience of the sons of Heth, four hundred shekels of silver, according to the current merchant's standard. So the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field, the cave which was in it, and all the trees that were in the field, that were in all of its borders, were deeded to Abraham as a possession in the presence of the sons of Heth, before all who went in at the gate of his city. After this, Abraham buried Sarah his wife in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan. The field, and the cave that is in it, were deeded to Abraham as a possession for a burial place by the sons of Heth. Chapter 24 Now Abraham was old, and well advanced in years. The Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Abraham said to his servant, the elder of his house, who ruled over all that he had, Please put your hand under my thigh. I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I live. But you shall go to my country, and to my relatives, and take a wife for my son Isaac. The servant said to him, What if the woman isn't willing to follow me to this land? Must I then bring your son back to the land from which you came? Abraham said to him, Be careful that you do not take my son back there. The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house, and from the land of my birth, who spoke to me, and who swore to me, saying, I will give this land to your offspring he will send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife for my son from there. If the woman isn't willing to follow you, then you shall be free from this oath to me. Only you shall not bring my son there again. The servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. The servant took ten camels, of his master's camels, and departed having a variety of good things of his masters with him. He arose, and went to Aram Na'arium, to the city of Nahor. He made the camels kneel down outside the city by the well of water at the time of evening, the time that women go out to draw water. He said, O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, please give me success this day, and show kindness to my master Abraham. Look, I am standing by the spring of water. The daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Let it happen that the young woman to whom I will say, Please let down your pitcher, that I may drink, and she will say, Drink, and I will also give your camels a drink, comma, let her be the one you have appointed for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. It happened, before he had finished speaking, that look, Rebekah came out, who was born to Betuel the son of Milka, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher on her shoulder. The young woman was very beautiful to look at a virgin, no man had ever slept with her. She went down to the spring, filled her pitcher, and came up. The servant ran to meet her, and said, Please give me a drink, a little water from your pitcher. She said, Drink, my lord. She hurried, and let down her pitcher to her hands, and gave him a drink. When she had finished giving him drink, she said, I will also draw for your camels, until they have finished drinking. She hurried, and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again to the well to draw, and drew for all his camels. The man looked steadfastly at her, 
remaining silent, to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. It happened, as the camels had finished drinking, that the man took a gold ring weighing a becca, which he put on her nose, and two bracelets for her hands weighing ten, shekels, of gold, and said, Whose daughter are you? Please tell me. Is there room in your father's house for us to lodge in? She said to him, I am the daughter of Betuel the son of Milka, whom she bore to Nahor. She said moreover to him, We have plenty of straw and feed, and room to lodge in. The man bowed his head, and worshipped the Lord. He said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his loving kindness and his truth toward my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. The young woman ran, and told her mother's house about these words. Rebecca had a brother, and his name was Laban. Laban ran out to the man, to the spring. It happened, when he saw the nose ring, and the bracelets on his sister's hands, and when he heard the words of Rebecca his sister, saying, This is what the man said to me, that he came to the man. Look, he was standing by the camels at the spring. He said, Come in, you blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? For I have prepared the house, and room for the camels. The man came into the house, and he unloaded the camels. He gave straw and feed for the camels, and water to wash his feet and the feet of the men who were with him. Food was set before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told my message. He said, Speak on. He said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master greatly. He has become great. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold male servants and female servants, and camels and donkeys. Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old. He has given all that he has to him. My master made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, and to my relatives, and take a wife for my son. I said to my master, What if the woman will not follow me? He said to me, The Lord before whom I walk, will send his angel with you, and prosper your journey. You shall take a wife for my son of my relatives, and of my father's house. Then will you be free from my oath, when you come to my relatives. If they do not give her to you, you shall be free from my oath. I came this day to the spring, and said, The Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will prosper my journey in which I go look, I am standing by this spring of water. Let it happen, that the virgin who comes out to draw, to whom I will say, Please give me a little water from your pitcher to drink, and she will tell me, Drink, and I will also draw for your camels, let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had done speaking in my heart, look, Rebecca came out with her pitcher on her shoulder. She went down to the spring, and drew. I said to her, Please give me a drink. She hurried and let down her pitcher from her shoulder, and said, Drink, and I will also give your camels a drink. So I drank, and she made the camels drink also. I asked her, and said, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Betuel, Nahor's son, whom Milka bore to him. I put the ring on her nose, and the bracelets on her hands. I bowed my head, and worshipped the Lord, and blessed the God of my master Abraham, who had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter for his son. Now if you will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me. If not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand, or to the left. Then Laban and Betuel answered, The thing proceeds from the Lord. We can't speak to you bad or good. Look, Rebekah is before you. Take, and go, and let her be your master's son's wife, as the Lord has spoken. It happened that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed himself down to the earth to the Lord. The servant brought out silver gold jewelry, and clothing, and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave valuable gifts to her brother and her mother. They ate and drank, he and the men who were with him, and stayed all night. They rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away to my master. Her brother and her mother said, Let the young woman stay with us a few days, at least ten. After that she will go. He said to them, Do not hinder me, seeing the Lord has prospered my journey. Send me away that I may go to my master. They said, We will call the young woman, and ask her. They called Rebecca, and said to her, Will you go with this man? She said, I will go. They sent away Rebecca, their sister, with her nurse, Abraham's servant, and his men. They blessed Rebecca, and said to her, Our sister, 
may you be the mother of thousands of ten thousands, and let your descendants possess the gate of those who hate them. Rebekah arose with her female servants. They rode on the camels, and followed the man. The servant took Rebekah, and went his way. Isaac came from the way of Beer Lahai Roi, for he lived in the land of the Negev. Isaac went out to walk in the field at the evening. He lifted up his eyes, and saw, and, look, there were camels coming. Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from the camel. She said to the servant, Who is the man who is walking in the field to meet us? The servant said, It is my master. She took her veil, and covered herself. The servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife. He loved her. Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Chapter 25 Abraham took another wife, and her name was Keturah. She bore him Zimran, Jikshan, Madon, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Jikshan became the father of Sheba, and Dedan. The sons of Dedan were Ashurim, Ledishim, and Laamim. The sons of Midian, Ephah, Ephor, Hanok, Abida, and Eldea. All these were the children of Keturah. And Abraham gave all that he owned to his son Isaac, and to the sons of Abraham's secondary wives, Abraham gave gifts. He sent them away from Isaac his son, while he was still living, eastward, to the east country. This was the length of Abraham's life, 175 years. Abraham breathed his last, and died in a good old age, an old man and satisfied, and was gathered to his people. Isaac and Ishmael, his sons, buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar the Hethite, which is near Mamre, the field which Abraham purchased from the sons of Heth. Abraham was buried there with Sarah, his wife. It happened after the death of Abraham that God blessed Isaac, his son. Isaac lived by Bir Laha Eroi. Now this is the history of the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's servant, bore to Abraham. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael, by their names, according to the order of their birth, the firstborn of Ishmael, Nebaiot, then Kedar, Adbiel, Mibsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tama, Jader, Nefish, and Kedema. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names, by their villages, and by their encampments, twelve princes, according to their clans. These are the years of the life of Ishmael, 137 years. He breathed his last and died, and was gathered to his people. They lived from Havilatashur, which is near Egypt, all the way to Ashur. He settled near all his kinsmen. These are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac was forty years old when he took Rebekah, the daughter of Betuel the Syrian of Paddan Aram, the sister of Laban the Aramean, to be his wife. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife, because she was barren. The Lord was moved by his prayer, and Rebekah his wife conceived. The children struggled together within her. She said, If all is well, why am I like this? She went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples will be separated from your body. The one people will be stronger than the other people. The elder will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, look, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red all over, like a hairy garment. They named him Esau. After that, his brother came out, and his hand had hold on Esau's heel. He was named Jacob. Isaac was sixty years old when she bore them. The boys grew. Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field. Jacob was a quiet man, living in tents. And Isaac loved Esau, because he ate his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Now Jacob was cooking stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with that same red stew, for I am famished. Therefore his name was called Edom. Jacob said, First, sell me your birthright. Esau said, Look, I am about to die. What good is the birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore to him, and he sold his birthright to Jacob. Jacob gave Esau bread and stew of lentils. He ate and drank, rose up, and went his way. So Esau despised his birthright. Chapter 26 There was a famine in the land, besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Isaac went to Abimelech king of the Philistines, to Gerar. The Lord appeared to him, and said, 
Do not go down into Egypt. Live in the land I will tell you about. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with you, and will bless you. For to you, and to your descendants, I will give all these lands, and I will establish the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the sky, and will give to your descendants all these lands, and by your descendants will all the nations of the earth be blessed, because Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my requirements, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So Isaac settled in Gerar. The men of the place asked him about his wife. He said, She is my sister, for he was afraid to say, My wife, lest, he thought, the men of the place might kill me for Rebekah, because she is beautiful to look at. It happened, when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech king of the Philistines looked out at a window, and saw, and look, Isaac was caressing Rebekah, his wife. Abimelech called Isaac, and said, Look, surely she is your wife. Why did you say, she is my sister? Isaac said to him, Because I thought, lest I die because of her. Abimelech said, What is this you have done to us? One of the people might easily have slept with your wife, and you would have brought guilt on us. Abimelech commanded all the people, saying, He who touches this man or his wife will surely be put to death. Isaac sowed in that land, and reaped in the same year one hundred times what he planted. The Lord blessed him. The man became wealthy, and prospered more and more until he became very wealthy. He had possessions of flocks, possessions of herds, and a great household. The Philistines envied him. Now all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped, and filled with earth. Abimelech said to Isaac, Go from us, for you are much mightier than we. Isaac departed from there, camped in the valley of Gerar, and lived there. Isaac dug again the wells of water, which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. He called their names after the names by which his father had called them. Isaac's servants dug in the valley, and found there a well of flowing water. The herdsmen of Gerar argued with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. He called the name of the well Essek, because they contended with him. They dug another well, and they argued over that, also. He called its name Sidna. He left that place, and dug another well. They did not argue over that one. He called it Rehoboth. He said, For now the Lord has made room for us, and we will be fruitful in the land. He went up from there to Beersheba. The Lord appeared to him the same night, and said, I am the God of Abraham your father. Do not be afraid, for I am with you, and will bless you, and multiply your descendants for my servant Abraham's sake. He built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord, and pitched his tent there. There Isaac's servants dug a well. Then Abimelech went to him from Gerar, and Ahazoth his friend, and Fickle the commander of his army. Isaac said to them, Why have you come to me, since you hate me, and have sent me away from you? They said, We saw plainly that the Lord was with you. We said, Let there now be an oath between us, even between us and you, and let us make a covenant with you, that you will do us no harm, as we have not touched you and as we have done to you nothing but good, and have sent you away in peace. You are now the blessed of the Lord. He made them a feast, and they ate and drank. They rose up some time in the morning, and swore an oath to each other. Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. It happened the same day, that Isaac's servants came, and told him concerning the well which they had dug, and said to him, We have found water. He called it Sheba. Therefore the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. When Esau was forty years old, he married Judith, the daughter of Beeri the Hittite, and Basimuth, the daughter of Elon the Hittite. They brought grief to Isaac and Rebekah. Chapter 27 It happened, that when Isaac was old, and his eyesight was failing so that he could not see, he called Esau his elder son, and said to him, My son. He said to him, Here I am. He said, Look, I am old now. I do not know the day of my death. Now therefore, please take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the field, and hunt down a wild animal for me. Make me the tasty food that I love and bring it to me to eat, so that I may bless you before I die. Rebekah heard when Isaac spoke to Esau his son. Esau went out to the field to hunt for a wild animal and bring it back. Rebekah spoke to Jacob her son, saying, Look, I heard your father speak to Esau your brother, saying, Bring me some wild animal and prepare for me some tasty food, that I may eat it and bless you in the presence of the Lord before my death. Now therefore, my son, 
Obey my voice according to that which I command you, go now to the flock, and get me from there two choice young goats. I will prepare them in a tasty way for your father, the way he likes it. You shall bring it to your father, that he may eat, so that he may bless you before his death. Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Look, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. What if my father touches me? I will seem to him as a deceiver, and I would bring a curse on myself, and not a blessing. His mother said to him, Let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice, and go get them for me. He went, and got them, and brought them to his mother. His mother prepared some tasty food, just the way his father liked it. Rebekah took the good clothes of Esau, her elder son, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. She put the skins of the young goats on his hands, and on the smooth of his neck. She handed the tasty food and the bread which she had prepared to her son Jacob. He came to his father, and said, My father? He said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau your firstborn. I have done what you asked me to do, please sit up and eat what I hunted so that you can bless me. Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? He said, Because the Lord your God gave me success. Isaac said to Jacob, Please come near, that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son Esau or not. Jacob went near to Isaac his father. He felt him, and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. He did not recognize him, because his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau. So he blessed him. He said, Are you really my son Esau? He said, I am. He said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of what my son caught so that I can bless you. He brought it near to him, and he ate. He brought him wine, and he drank. His father Isaac said to him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. He came near, and kissed him. He smelled the scent of his clothing, and blessed him, and said, Look, the scent of my son is as the scent of a field which the Lord has blessed. God give you of the dew of the sky, of the fatness of the earth and plenty of grain and new wine. Let people serve you, and nations bow down to you. Be lord over your brothers. Let your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you. Blessed be everyone who blesses you. It happened, as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and Jacob had just left the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting. He also made some tasty food, and brought it to his father. He said to his father, let my father get up and eat of what his son caught, so that you may bless me. Isaac his father said to him, Who are you? He said, I am your son, your firstborn, Esau. Isaac trembled violently, and said, Who is it then that hunted an animal and brought it to me, and I ate it all before you came, and have blessed him? Yes, he will be blessed. When Esau heard the words of his father, he cried out loudly and bitterly, and said to his father, Bless me, even me also. My father, he said, your brother came with deceit, and has taken away your blessing. He said, isn't he rightly named Jacob? For he has taken what should have been mine these two times. He took away my birthright. Look, now he has taken away my blessing. He said, haven't you reserved a blessing for me? Isaac answered Esau, look, I have made him your lord, and I have made all of his brothers his servants, and I have sustained him with grain and new wine. What then can I do for you? my son. Esau said to his father, Have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, my father. Esau lifted up his voice, and wept. Isaac his father answered him, Look, of the fatness of the earth will be your dwelling, and of the dew of the sky from above. By your sword will you live, and you will serve your brother. It will happen, when you will break loose, that you shall shake his yoke from off your neck. Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing with which his father blessed him. Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. The words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. She sent and called Jacob, her younger son, and said to him, Look, your brother Esau comforts himself about you by planning to kill you. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee to Laban, my brother, in Haran. Stay with him a few days, until your brother S. fury turns away, until your brother S. anger against you subsides, and he forgets what you have done to him. Then I will send for you and get you from there. Why should I lose both of you in one day? 
Rebekah said to Isaac, I loathe my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob takes a wife from the daughters of Heth, like these, from the daughters of the land, what good is my life? Chapter 28 Isaac called Jacob, blessed him, and commanded him, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Paddan Aram, to the house of Betuel your mother's father. Take a wife from there from the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May El Shaddai bless you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, that you may be a company of peoples, and give you the blessing of Abraham, to you, and to your descendants with you, that you may inherit the land where you travel, which God gave to Abraham. Isaac sent Jacob away. He went to Paddan Aram to Laban, son of Betuel the Syrian, Rebekah's brother, Jacob's and Esau's mother. Now Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Paddan Aram, to take him a wife from there and that as he blessed him he gave him a command, saying, You shall not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan, and that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother, and left for Paddan Aram. Esau saw that the daughters of Canaan did not please Isaac, his father. Esau went to Ishmael, and took, besides the wives that he had, Mahalath the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebaiot, to be his wife. Jacob went out from Beersheba, and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place, and stayed there all night, because the sun had set. He took one of the stones of the place, and put it under his head, and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and look, a stairway was set upon the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And look, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And look, the Lord stood above it, and said, I am the God of Abraham your grandfather, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you are lying I will give to you and to your descendants. Your descendants will be as the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And through you and through your descendants will all the families of the earth be blessed. And look, I am with you, and will watch over you wherever you go, and will bring you again into this land. For I will not leave you, until I have done that which I have spoken of to you. Then Jacob woke up from his sleep, and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than God's house, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning, and took the stone that he had put under his head, and set it up as a standing stone, and poured oil on top of it. He called the name of that place Bethel, though previously the city was named Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will watch over me on this journey I am taking, and will give me food to eat, and clothing to put on, so that I return to my father's house safely, then the Lord will be my God, and this stone, which I have set up as a standing stone, will be God's house. Of all that you will give me I will surely give the tenth to you. Chapter 29 Then Jacob went on his journey, and came to the land of the children of the east. He looked and saw a well in the field, and look, three flocks of sheep lying there by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks. The stone on the well's mouth was large. Now all the flocks would be gathered there, and they would roll the stone from the well's mouth, and water the sheep, and put the stone again on the well's mouth in its place. Jacob said to them, My brothers, where are you from? They said, We are from Haran. He said to them, Do you know Laban, the grandson of Nahor? They said, We know him. He said to them, Is it well with him? They said, It is well. See, Rachel, his daughter, is coming with the sheep. He said, Look, it is still the middle of the day, not time to gather the livestock together. Water the sheep, and go, pasture them. They said, We can't, until all the flocks are gathered together, and they roll the stone from the well's mouth. Then we water the sheep. While he was yet speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was tending them. It happened, when Jacob saw Rachel the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother that Jacob went over and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban his mother's brother. Jacob kissed Rachel, and wept loudly. Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother, and that he was Rebekah's son. She ran and told her father. It happened, when Laban heard the news of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet Jacob, and embraced him, and kissed him, and brought him to his house. Jacob told Laban all these things. Laban said to him, Surely you are my bone and my flesh. He lived with him for a month. Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my brother, 
Should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me what your wages should be? Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. Jacob loved Rachel. He said, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you, than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me. Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and it seemed only a few days to him because of his love for her. Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my time is completed, so that I may sleep with her. Laban gathered together all the people of the place, and gave a feast. It happened in the evening, that he took Leah his daughter and brought her to him, and he slept with her. Laban gave Zilpah his female servant to his daughter Leah as a servant. It happened in the morning that, look, it was Leah. He said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not work for you to have Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, It is not our custom here to give the younger before the firstborn. Finish the week of this one, and I will give you the other also in exchange for the work which you are to serve with me for another seven years. Then Jacob did so, and fulfilled her week. He gave him Rachel his daughter as wife. Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah, his female servant, to be her servant. So he slept with Rachel also, and he loved Rachel more than Leah. And he worked with him another seven years. The Lord saw that Leah was hated, and he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Leah conceived, and bore a son, and she named him Reuben. For she said, Because the Lord has looked at my affliction, and given me a son, for now my husband will love me. She conceived again, and bore a son, and said, Because the Lord has heard that I am unloved. He has therefore given me this son also. So she named him Simeon. She conceived again, and bore a son. She said, Now this time my husband will become attached to me, since I have given him three sons. Therefore he was named Levi. She conceived again, and bore a son. She said, This time will I praise the Lord. Therefore she named him Judah. Then she stopped bearing. Chapter 30 when Rachel saw that she was not bearing Jacob any children, Rachel envied her sister. She said to Jacob, Give me children, or else I will die. Then Jacob became very angry with Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's place, who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? She said, Look, my servant Bilhah. Sleep with her, so that she will bear children for me, that I too may have children through her. So she gave him Bilhah her servant as a wife, and Jacob slept with her. Bilhah conceived, and bore Jacob a son. Rachel said, God has judged me, and has also heard my voice, and has given me a son. Therefore she called his name Dan. Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, conceived again, and bore Jacob a second son. Rachel said, I have wrestled mightily with my sister, and have prevailed. So she named him Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had stopped bearing, she took Zilpah, her servant, and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, bore Jacob a son. Leah said, How fortunate! So she named him Gad. Zilpah, Leah's servant, bore Jacob a second son. Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me happy. So she named him Asher. Reuben went out during the wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field, and brought them to his mother, Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Please give me some of your son's mandrakes. She said to her, is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes, also? Rachel said, Therefore he may sleep with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. Jacob came from the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, You must sleep with me, for I have surely hired you with my son's mandrakes. So he slept with her that night. God listened to Leah, and she conceived, and bore Jacob a fifth son. Leah said, God has given me my wages because I gave my servant to my husband. So she named him Issachar. Leah conceived again, and bore a sixth son to Jacob. Leah said, God has given me with a good gift. Now my husband will live with me, because I have borne him six sons. So she named him Zebulun. Afterwards, she bore a daughter, and named her Dinah. God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her, and made her fertile. She conceived, bore a son, and said, God has taken away my shame. So she named him Joseph, saying, May God add another son to me. It happened, when Rachel had born Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, Send me away, 
that I may go to my own place, and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you, and let me go, for you know the service I have given you. Laban said to him, If now I have found favor in your eyes, stay here, for I have learned by divination that God has blessed me for your sake. He said, Name your wages, and I will pay it. He said to him, You know how I have served you, and how well your livestock have done with me. For you had little before I came, and it has increased abundantly. And the Lord has blessed you wherever I worked. Now when will I also provide for my own household? He said, What should I give you? Jacob said, You do not need to give me anything. If you will do this one thing for me, I will again pasture your flock and take care of it. I will pass through all your flock today, removing from there every speckled and spotted one, and every black one among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats. This will be my wages. So my honesty will testify for me later on, when the subject of my wages comes before you. Every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and black among the sheep that I have in my possession, will be counted as stolen. Laban said, Look, let it be as you have said. That day, he removed the male goats that were streaked and spotted, and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had widened it, and all the black ones among the sheep, and put them in the care of his sons. He set three days journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob pastured the rest of Laban's flocks. Jacob took fresh branches from poplar, almond and plane trees and made white streaks by peeling them, exposing white stripes on the branches. He set up the peeled branches which he had peeled opposite the flocks in the troughs, that is, the watering places where the flocks came to drink. And since they bred when they came to drink, the flocks bred in front of the branches, and the flocks brought boar streaked, speckled, and spotted. Jacob separated the lambs, and made the flocks face toward the streaked and all the black in the flock of Laban. So he kept his own flocks separate, and did not put them into Laban's flock. It happened, whenever the stronger of the flock were breeding, that Jacob would set up the branches in front of the flock in the troughs, so that they would breed near the branches, but for the weaker of the flock, he did not put them there. So the weaker would be Laban's, and the stronger Jacob's. Thus the man became very rich and had large flocks, female servants and male servants, and camels and donkeys. Chapter 31 He heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's. From that which was our father's he has gained all this wealth. Jacob saw the expression on Laban's face, and look, it was not as it had been. The Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers, and to your relatives, and I will be with you. Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field where his flock was, and said to them, I see the expression on your father's face, that it is not what it was before, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all of my strength. Yet your father has cheated me and changed my wages ten times, but God did not allow him to hurt me. If he said this, the speckled will be your wages, then all the flock bore speckled. If he said this, the streak will be your wages, then all the flock bore streaked. Thus God has taken away your father's livestock and given them to me. And it came about at the time when the flocks were breeding I looked up and saw in a dream, and look, the male goats which leapt on the flock were streaked, speckled, and spotted. The angel of God said to me in the dream, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. He said, Now lift up your eyes, and look, all the male goats which leap on the flock are streaked, speckled, and spotted for I have seen all that Laban has done to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a standing stone, where you made a vow to me. Now arise, go out from this land and return to the land of your birth. Rachel and Leah answered him, Is there yet any portion or inheritance for us in our father's house? Aren't we regarded by him as foreigners? For he has sold us, and he has used up what was paid for us. For all the wealth which God has taken away from our father, that is ours and our children's. Now then, whatever God has said to you, do. Then Jacob got up and put his sons and his wives on the camels, and he took away all his livestock and all his property which he had acquired, including the livestock which he had gained in Paddan Aram, to go to Isaac his father in the land of Canaan. Now Laban had gone to shear his sheep, and Rachel stole the idols that belonged to her father. Jacob outwitted Laban the Aramean by not telling him that he intended to flee. So he fled with everything that he had, and he arose and crossed the river, and set out toward the hill country of Gilead. Laban was told on the third day that Jacob had fled. 
he took his relatives with him, and pursued after him for seven days, and caught up with him in the hill country of Gilead. God came to Laban the Aramean in a dream at night, and said to him, Be careful that you do not speak to Jacob either good or bad. Laban caught up with Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country, and Laban with his relatives camped in the hill country of Gilead. Laban said to Jacob, What have you done? You have deceived me, and carried away my daughters like captives taken in war? Why did you flee in secret and deceive me, and not tell me, so that I might have sent you away with joy and singing, with a tambourine and with a lyre? And you did not allow me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Now you have done foolishly. It is in my power to do you harm, but the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, Be careful that you do not speak to Jacob either good or bad. Now you have indeed gone away, because you long greatly for your father's house. But why have you stolen my gods? Jacob answered Laban, Because I was afraid, for I thought that you would take your daughters from me by force. Anyone you find your gods with shall not live. In the presence of our relatives, identify what I have that is yours, and take it with you. For Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. Laban went into Jacob's tent, into Leah's tent, and into the tent of the two female servants, but he did not find them. He went out of Leah's tent, and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the idols, put them in the camel's saddle, and sat on them. Laban searched the whole tent, but did not find them. She said to her father, do not let my lord be angry that I can't rise up before you, for the manner of women is on me. He searched, but did not find the teraphim. Jacob was angry, and argued with Laban. Jacob answered Laban, What is my trespass? What is my sin, that you have hotly pursued after me? Now that you have searched around in all my stuff, did you find anything from all of your household's belongings? Put it here before my relatives and your relatives, that they may judge between the two of us. These twenty years I have been with you. Your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried their young, and I haven't eaten the rams of your flocks. That which was torn by animals I did not bring to you. I bore its loss. You demanded payment from me whether stolen by day or stolen by night. I was consumed by the heat during the day and by the frost at night, and sleepless nights. These twenty years I have been in your house. I served you fourteen years for your two daughters, and six years for your flock and you have changed my wages ten times. Unless the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the one whom Isaac fears, had been with me, surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed. God has seen my harsh treatment and my hard work, and rebuked you last night. Laban answered Jacob, The daughters are my daughters, the children are my children, the flocks are my flocks, and all that you see is mine, and what can I do this day to these my daughters, or to their children whom they have born? So now, Come, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between the two of us. And he said to him, Look, there is no one with us, see, God is witness between me and you. Jacob took a stone and set it up as a standing stone. Jacob said to his relatives, Gather stones. So they took stones and made a mound. They ate there by the mound. Laban called it Jagursahadutha, but Jacob called it Galid. Laban said, This mound is a witness between me and you today. Therefore it was named Gilead and Mizpah, for he said, God watch between me and you, when we are absent one from another. If you mistreat my daughters, or if you take wives besides my daughters, although no one is with us, see, God is witness between me and you. Laban said to Jacob, See this mound, and see the standing stone, which I have set between me and you. May this mound be a witness, and the standing stone be a witness, that I will not pass over this mound to you and that you will not pass over this mound and this standing stone to me, to do harm. The God of Abraham, and the God of Nahor, the God of their father, judge between us. Then Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain, and called his relatives to eat the meal. They ate the meal and stayed all night on the mountain. Early in the morning, Laban rose up, and kissed his sons and his daughters, and blessed them. Laban departed and returned to his place. Chapter 32. Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. When he saw them, Jacob said, This is God's camp. He called the name of that place Mahanaim. Jacob sent messengers ahead of him to Esau, his brother, to the land of Seir, the region of Edom. He commanded them, saying, This is what you shall tell my lord, Esau, this is what your servant, Jacob, says. I have lived as a foreigner with Laban, 
and stayed until now, I have cattle, donkeys, flocks, male servants, and female servants. I have sent to tell my Lord, that I may find favor in your sight. The messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau. Not only that, but he comes to meet you, and four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was very afraid and was distressed. He divided the people who were with him, and the flocks, and the herds, and the camels, into two camps, and he said, If Esau comes to the one camp, and strikes it, then the other camp will escape. Jacob said, God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord, who said to me, Return to your country, and to your relatives, and I will be good. I am not worthy of the least of all the loving kindnesses and of all the faithfulness which you have shown to your servant, for with just my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I have become two camps. Please deliver me from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear that he will come and attack me and the mothers with the children. You said, I will surely do you good and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which can't you be counted because there are so many. So he spent the night there and selected from what he had acquired a present for his brother Esau. 200 female goats and 20 male goats, 200 ewes and 20 rams, 30 milk camels with their young, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. He entrusted them into the hands of his servants as separate herds, and said to his servants, Pass over before me, and keep some distance between the herds. He instructed the first, saying, When Esau my brother meets you and asks you, saying, Whose are you? Where are you going? Whose are these ahead of you? Then you shall say, They are your servant, Jacob S. It is a present sent to my lord Esau. And look, he also is behind us. He instructed also the second, and the third, and all that followed the herds, saying, This is how you are to speak to Esau, when you find him. You shall say, Not only that, but look, your servant Jacob is behind us. For, he said, I will appease him with the present that goes before me, and afterward I will meet him. Perhaps he will accept me. So the gift passed over before him, and he himself stayed that night in the camp. He got up that night and took his two wives, and his two female servants, and his eleven sons and crossed over the fort of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and set over all his possessions. Then Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the rising of the dawn. When he saw that he did not defeat him, he struck the socket of his hip, and Jacob's hip was dislocated as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I won't he let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? He said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name will no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask what my name is? And he blessed him there. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life has been preserved. The sun rose on him as he passed by Peniel, and he limped because of his hip. Therefore, to this day the children of Israel do not eat the tendon of the hip socket, because he struck Jacob's hip socket near the tendon. Chapter 33 Now Jacob looked up and saw that Esau approaching, and with him four hundred men. He divided the children between Leah, Rachel, and the two female servants. He put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children after, and Rachel and Joseph last. He himself went on ahead of them, and bowed himself to the ground seven times, until he approached his brother. Esau ran to meet him, embraced him, hugged his neck, and kissed him. And they wept. And he looked up and saw the women and the children, and said, Who are these with you? He said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the female servants came forward with their children and they bowed themselves. Leah also and her children came forward, and bowed themselves. After them, Joseph came forward with Rachel, and they bowed themselves. Esau said, What do you mean by all this company which I met? Jacob said, To find favor in the sight of my lord. Esau said, I have enough, my brother, keep what you have for yourself. Jacob said, No, please, if I have now found favor in our sight, then accept my present from my hand because I have seen your face, which is like seeing the face of God, since you have accepted me. Please take the gift that I brought to you, because God has been gracious to me, and because I have enough. Thus he urged him, and he took it. Esau said, Let us take our journey, and let us go, and I will go ahead of you. 
Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are tender, and that the sheep and cattle with me have their young, and if they overdrive them one day, the whole herd will die. Please let my Lord pass on ahead of his servant, and I will move along slowly, at the pace of the herds that are before me and at the pace of the children, until I come to my Lord at Seir. Esau said, Let me now leave with you some of my people who are with me, but he said, What need is there? Please indulge me, my Lord. So Esau returned that day on the road to Seir. But Jacob traveled to Succoth, and he built himself a house, and made shelters for his livestock. Therefore the name of the place is called Succoth. After Jacob came from Paddan Aram, he arrived safely at the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan, and camped near the city. He purchased the parcel of land where he had pitched his tent, from the sons of Hamor, Shechem's father, for a hundred kezidas. He erected an altar there and called it El Elohe Israel. Chapter 34 Dinah, the daughter whom Leah had borne to Jacob, went out to visit the women of the region. When Shechem the son of Hamor the Hivite, the ruler of the land, saw her, he grabbed her, and raped her, and humiliated her. Then he became very attached to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the young woman, and spoke kindly to the young woman. Shechem spoke to his father, Hamor, saying, Get me this young woman as my wife. Now Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter, and his sons were with his livestock in the field. Jacob remained silent until they came. Hamor the father of Shechem went out to Jacob to speak with him. The sons of Jacob came in from the field when they heard it. The men were grieved, and they were very angry, because he had disgraced Israel by sexually assaulting Jacob's daughter, a thing that should not be done. Hamor talked with them, saying, The heart of my son Shechem is set on your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife. Arrange marriages with us. Give your daughters to us, and take our daughters for yourselves. You may settle among us and the land will be open to you. Live and trade in it, and acquire property in it. Shechem said to her father and to her brothers, Let me find favor in your sight, and whatever you ask of me I will give. Ask me for a very expensive bride price, and I will pay whatever you ask of me, but give me the young woman as a wife. The sons of Jacob replied deceitfully to Shechem and his father Hamor, because he had defiled their sister Dinah. And they said to them, We can t do this thing to give our sister to one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a disgrace to us. Only on this condition will we agree with you, that you become like us by circumcising all your males, then will we give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to ourselves, and we will live among you and become one people. But if you will not listen to us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and go away. Their words pleased Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. The young man did not delay to do this thing because he was delighted with Jacob's daughter. Now he was the most important of anyone in his father's house. Hamor and his son Shechem came to the gate of their city, and spoke to the men of their city, saying, These men are at peace with us. Therefore let them live in the land and travel in it. For a look, the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters as wives for ourselves, and let us give them our daughters. Only on this condition will the men agree to live with us as one people that every male among us be circumcised, as they are circumcised. One t their livestock and their possessions and all their animals be ours? Only let us agree with them, so they will settle among us. All who went out of the gate of his city agreed with Hamor and his son Shechem, and every male was circumcised, all who went out of the gate of his city. It happened on the third day, when they were still in pain, that two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, each took his sword and came into the unsuspecting city and killed all the males. They killed Hamor and his son Shechem with their swords and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and left. Jacob's sons entered over the dead and plundered the city, because they had defiled their sister. They took their flocks, their herds, their donkeys, and whatever was in the city and was in the field, and all their wealth. They took captive all their little ones and their wives, and took as plunder everything that was in the houses. Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have brought trouble on me, to make me odious to the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites. I am few in number. They will gather themselves together against me and attack me, and I and my household will be destroyed. But they said, Should he treat our sister like a prostitute? Chapter 35 And God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and live there. Make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from your brother Esau. Then Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, 
Get rid of the foreign gods that you have among you, and purify yourselves and change your clothes. Let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make an altar there to God, who answered me in the day of my distress, and has been with me wherever I went. So they gave to Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their possession, and the rings that were in their ears, and Jacob buried them under the oak that was near Shechem. Then they set out, and a terror of God was upon the cities that were around them, so that they did not pursue the sons of Jacob. So Jacob came to Luz, that is, Bethel, which is in the land of Canaan, he and all the people who were with him. He built an altar there, and called the place El Bethel, because their God had revealed himself to him when he was fleeing from his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse, died, and she was buried under an oak outside Bethel. So he called its name Alon Bakuth. And God appeared to Jacob again after he returned from Paddan Aram, and blessed him. God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name will no longer be called Jacob, but your name will be Israel. So he called his name Israel. And God said to him, I am El Shaddai. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations will come from you, and kings will come from your body. The land which I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I will give to you, and I will give the land to your descendants after you. Then God went up from him in the place where he spoke with him. And Jacob set up a standing stone in the place where he spoke with him, a pillar of stone. And he poured out a drink offering on it, and poured oil on it. Jacob called the name of the place where God spoke with him Bethel. Then they set out from Bethel. There was still some distance to come to Ephrat, and Rachel went into labor, and her labor was difficult. When she was in the difficult labor, the midwife said to her, Do not be afraid, for now you have another son. It happened, as her soul was departing, for she died, that she named him Benoni, but his father named him Benjamin. So Rachel died and was buried on the way to Ephrat, that is, Bethlehem. Jacob set up a standing stone on her grave. It is the standing stone of Rachel's grave to this day. And Israel traveled and pitched his tent beyond Migdaletter. It happened, while Israel lived in that land, that Reuben went and slept with Bilhah, his father's secondary wife, and Israel heard about it. Now the sons of Jacob were twelve. The sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Zebulun. The sons of Rachel, Joseph and Benjamin. And the sons of Bilhah, Rachel's servant, Dan and Naphtali. And the sons of Zilpah, Leah's servant, Gad and Asher. These are the sons of Jacob who were born to him in Paddan Aram. So Jacob came to Isaac his father at Mamre in Kiriath Arba, which is Hebron where Abraham and Isaac had sojourned. Now the days of Isaac were 180 years. And Isaac took his last breath and died, and was gathered to his people, old and full of days. And his son Esau and Jacob buried him. Chapter 36 Now these are the generations of Esau, that is, Edom. Esau took his wives from the daughters of Canaan, Adah the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, and Elibama the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite, and Basimoth. Ishmael's daughter, sister of Nevi'ot. Adah bore to Esau Eliphaz. Basimoth bore Ruel. Olibama bore Jeush, and Jalam, and Korah. These are the sons of Esau, who were born to him in the land of Canaan. Esau took his wives, his sons, his daughters, and all the people of his household, with his livestock, all his animals, and all of the property he had acquired in the land of Canaan, and went out from the land of Canaan away from the presence of his brother Jacob. For their possessions were too great for them to remain together, and the land in which they were traveling could not support them because of their livestock. And Esau, also known as Edom, settled in the hill country of Seir. These are the generations of Esau the father of the Edomites in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Ada, the wife of Esau, and Ruel, the son of Basimoth, the wife of Esau. The sons of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, and Gatam and Kenaz. Timnah was the secondary wife to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bore to Eliphaz Amalek. These are the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Ruel, Nahath, and Zerah, Shammah, and Mizah. These were the sons of Basimoth, Esau's wife. These were the sons of Elibama, the daughter of Anna, the daughter of Zibion, Esau's wife. She bore to Esau Jeush, and Jalam, and Korah. These are the chiefs of the sons of Esau, the sons of Eliphaz the firstborn of Esau, Chief Teman, Chief Omar, Chief Zepho, Chief Kenaz, Chief Korah, Chief Gatam, 
Chief Amalek, these are the chiefs who came of Eliphaz in the land of Edom, these are the sons of Adah, these are the sons of Ruel, Esau's son, Chief Nahath, Chief Sarah, Chief Shammah, Chief Mizah, these are the chiefs of Ruel in the land of Edom, these are the sons of Basimoth, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Alibama, Esau's wife, Chief Jeish, Chief Jalam, Chief Korah, these are the chiefs who came of Alibama the daughter of Anna, Esau's wife. These are the sons of Esau, also known as Edom, and these are their chiefs. These are the sons of Seir the Harite, the inhabitants of the land, Lotan, and Shobal, and Zibion, and Anna, and Disan, and Ezer, and Dishan. These are the chiefs of the Horites, the sons of Seir in the land of Edom. The sons of Lotan were Hori and Hemam. Lotan's sister was Timna. These are the sons of Shobal, Alvin, and Manahath, and Ebal, Shepho, and Onam. These are the sons of Zibion, I and Anna. This is the Anna who found the hot springs in the desert as he pastured the donkeys of his father Zibion. These are the children of Anna, Disan, and Olibama the daughter of Anna. These are the children of Disan, Hamdan, and Eshban, and Ithron, and Karan. These are the sons of Ezer, Bilhan, and Zevan, and Akan. These are the sons of Dishan, Uz and Aaron. These are the chiefs of the Horites, Chief Lotan, Chief Shobal, Chief Sibion, Chief Anna, Chief Dison, Chief Ezer, and Chief Dishan. These are the chiefs who came of the Horites, according to their chiefs in the land of Seir. These are the kings who reigned in the land of Edom, before any king reigned over the children of Israel. Bala the son of Beor reigned in Edom. The name of his city was Dinhaba when Bala died, and Jobab, the son of Zerah of Basra reigned in his place. And Jobab died, and Hashem of the land of the Temanites reigned in his place. And Hashem died, and Hadad the son of Bedad who struck Midian in the field of Moab reigned in his place. The name of his city was Aphith. And Hadad died, and Samla of Masrekah reigned in his place. And Samla died, and Shal of Rehoboth on the river reigned in his place. And Shal died. And Baal Hanan the son of Achbar reigned in his place. And Baal Hanan the son of Achbar died, and Hadad reigned in his place. The name of his city was Pau. His wife's name was Mehedabil, the daughter of Matrid, the daughter of Mezab. These are the names of the chiefs who came from Esau, according to their families, according to their places, and by their names Chief Timnah, Chief Elva, Chief Jethith, Chief Alibama, Chief Ella, Chief Pinyon, Chief Kenaz, Chief Taman. Chief Mibzar, Chief Magdil, and Chief Iram. These are the chiefs of Edom, according to their settlements in the land they possessed. This is Esau the father of Edom. Chapter 37 Jacob lived in the land where his father had sojourned, in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being seventeen years old, tended the flock with his brothers, he was an assistant to the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report about them to their father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made a long sleeved robe for him. His brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, and they hated him, and couldn't he speak a kind word to him. Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him all the more. He said to them, Please listen to this dream I had, and look, we were binding sheaves in the field. And look, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And look, your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. Then his brothers said to him, Will you indeed reign over us? Or will you indeed rule over us? So they hated him all the more for his dreams and for what he said. And he had another dream, and told it to his father and to his brothers, and said, Look, I had yet another dream, and look, the sun and the moon and eleven stars bowed down to me. When he told it to his father and to his brothers, his father rebuked him, and said to him, What is this dream that you had? Will I and your mother and your brothers indeed come and bow down to the ground in front of you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept thinking about the matter. Now his brothers went to pasture their father's flock near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Aren't he your brothers pasturing the flock near Shechem? Come, and I will send you to them. And he said to him, I am ready. So he said to him, Go now. See whether it is well with your brothers and well with the flock, and report back to me. So he sent him from the valley of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And a man found him, and look, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him, What are you looking for? He said, I am looking for my brothers. Tell me, please, 
where they are pasturing the flock. The man said, They have left here, for I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers, and found them in Dothan. Now they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them they plotted against him to kill him. And they said to one another, Look, this dreamer is coming. Come now, and let us kill him and throw him into one of the cisterns, and we will say that a vicious animal has devoured him. Then we will see what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard it, and delivered him out of their hands, and said, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit that is in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him that he might deliver him out of their hands, to restore him to his father. It happened, when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped Joseph of his robe, the long-sleeved robe that he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. Now the pit was empty. There was no water in it, then they sat down to eat a meal. And they looked up, and look, a caravan of Ishmaelites was coming from Gilead with their camels bearing aromatic gum and balm and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and not lay a hand on him, for he is our brother, our flesh. And his brothers agreed. So the Midianites merchants passed by, and they pulled him up and lifted Joseph out of the cistern, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they brought Joseph to Egypt. And Reuben returned to the cistern and saw that Joseph was in tea in the cistern, and he tore his clothes. He went back to his brothers and said, The boy is gone. Now, what am I to do? They took Joseph's robe and killed a male goat and dipped the robe in the blood. And they sent the long-sleeved robe and they brought it to their father, and said, We found this. Please examine it to see whether it is your son's robe or not. And he recognized it, and said, It is my son's robe. A vicious animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes, and put sackcloth around his waist, and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, Indeed, I will go down to Shul to my son mourning. And his father wept for him. Now the Midianites sold him into Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard. Chapter 38 it happened at that time that Judah moved away from his brothers and stayed with an Adolamite, whose name was Hirah. There Judah saw the daughter of a Canaanite whose name was Shua. And he married her and slept with her. She conceived and gave birth to a son, and he named him Ur. She conceived again and gave birth to a son, and she named him Onan. Then she gave birth to another son, and named him Shelah. And he was at Kezib when she gave birth to him. And Judah got a wife for Ur, his firstborn and her name was Tamar. Now Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, so God killed him. Then Judah said to Onan, Sleep with your brother's wife and fulfill the duty of a brother-in-law to her, and raise up offspring for your brother. But Onan knew that the offspring wouldn't he be his. So it happened when he slept with his brother's wife that he released his semen on the ground, so that he would not produce offspring for his brother. And what he did was evil in the sight of God, so he killed him also. Then Judah said to his daughter-in-law Tamar, Remain a widow in your father's house until my son Shelah is grown up. For he thought, I do not want him to die too, like his brothers. So Tamar went and lived in her father's house. After some time, Judah's wife, the daughter of Shua, died. And Judah finished mourning, and went up to his sheep shearers at Timnah, he and his friend Hirah the Adolamite. And Tamar was told, saying, Look. Your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep. She took off her widow's clothes and covered herself with a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat at the entrance to a name, which is on the way to Timnah. For she saw that Shelah was grown up, and she had not been given to him as a wife. When Judah saw her, he thought that she was a prostitute because she had covered her face. He went over to her by the road and said, Please come, let me sleep with you, for he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. She said, what will you give me for sleeping with you? He said, I will send you a young goat from the flock. She said, Will you give me something as a guarantee until you send it? He said, What kind of guarantee should I give you? She replied, Your signet and your cord and your staff that is in your hand. So he gave them to her, and slept with her, and she became pregnant by him. And she got up and left, and took off her veil, and put on her widow's clothing. Judah sent the young goat by his friend, the Adolamite to receive the guarantee back from the woman's hand, 
but he did not find her. Then he asked the men of the place, saying, Where is the prostitute that was at a name by the road? They said, There has been no prostitute here. He returned to Judah, and said, I haven't he found her, and also the men of the place said, There has been no prostitute here. Judah said, Let her keep the things, lest we be publicly shamed. Look, I sent this young goat, but you did not find her. Now it happened about three months later that Judah was told, saying, Tamar, your daughter-in-law, has turned to prostitution, and now, look, she is pregnant by prostitution. Judah said, Bring her out, and let her be burned. When she was brought out, she sent word to her father-in-law, saying, By the man who owns these I am pregnant. She also said, Please discern whose these are the signet, and the cord, and the staff. Then Judah recognized them, and said, She is more righteous than I, since I did not give her to my son Shelah. He did not sleep with her again. It happened when it was time for her to give birth, that look, there were twins in her womb. As she was in labor, one put out a hand, and the midwife took a scarlet thread and tied it on his hand, saying, This one came out first. It happened, as he drew back his hand, that look, his brother came out, and she said, How did you break through? So he was named Perez. Afterward his brother came out, that had the scarlet thread on his hand, so he was named Zerah. Chapter 39. Now Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh S., the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. And he was in the household of his master the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made everything that he did to succeed in his hands. So Joseph found favor in the sight of his master, and attended him and he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had he put under his authority. And it came about that from the time that he made him overseer of his household and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house because of Joseph, and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had, in the house and in the field. So he left everything that he had in Joseph's care. He did not concern himself with anything, except for the food which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife took notice of Joseph and she said, Sleep with me. But he refused, and said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not concern himself with anything in his house, and he has put all that he is into my care. There is no one greater in this household than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, since you are his wife. How then can I do such a great evil, and sin against God? And although she spoke to Joseph day after day, he did not listen to her to sleep with her or to be with her. Now it happened about this time that he went into the house to do his work, and there were none of the men of the house inside. She grabbed him by his garment, saying, Sleep with me. And he left his garment in her hand and ran outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had run outside, she called to the men of her house, and spoke to them, saying, Look, he has brought in a Hebrew to us to mock us. He came into me to sleep with me, and I cried with a loud voice. It happened, when he heard that I raised my voice and cried out, that he left his garment by me and ran outside. She left his garment by her, until his master came home. And she told him the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant, whom you have brought to us, came into me to mock me, and said to me, Let me sleep with you. But when I raised my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and ran outside. And it happened when his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, saying, This is what your servant did to me that he became furious. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him kindness and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. The keeper of the prison put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners who were in the prison, he was made responsible for everything that was done there. The keeper of the prison paid no attention to anything that was under his supervision, because the Lord was with him and whatever he did the Lord made it succeed. Chapter 40. It happened after these things that the cupbearer of the king of Egypt and his baker offended their lord, the king of Egypt. Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief cupbearer and the chief baker. So he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard, in the prison, the place where Joseph was confined. The captain of the guard assigned them to Joseph, and he attended them. They stayed in prison for some time. And the cupbearer and the baker for the king of Egypt, who were confined in jail, both had a dream the same night, and each dream had its own meaning. 
Joseph met them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad. He asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in custody in his master's house, saying, Why do you look so sad today? They said to him, We both had dreams, but there is no one who can interpret it. Joseph said to them, Do not interpretations belong to God, please tell it to me. The chief cupbearer told his dream to Joseph, and said to him, In my dream, look, a vine was in front of me, and in the vine were three branches. When it budded, its blossoms opened, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I placed the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Then Joseph said to him, This is its interpretation. The three branches are three days. Within three days Pharaoh will lift up your head and restore you to your office. You will put Pharaoh's cup into his hand as you used to when you were his cupbearer. But remember me when it goes well for you, and please do me the kindness to mention me to Pharaoh and get me out of this prison. For indeed, I was kidnapped from the land of the Hebrews, and even here I have done nothing that they should have put me into the pit. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was favorable, he said to Joseph, I also appeared in my dream, and look, three baskets of white bread were on my head. In the top basket there was all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. Joseph answered, This is its interpretation, the three baskets are three days. Within three days Pharaoh will lift up your head from off you, and impale you on a pole, and the birds will eat your flesh off you. And it happened on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday that he gave a feast for all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief cupbearer and the head of the chief baker among his servants. He restored the chief cupbearer to his position again, and he placed the cup into Pharaoh's hand, but he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them. But the chief cupbearer did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. Chapter 41 Now it happened at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream, and look, he was standing by the Nile. And look, there came up out of the Nile seven cows, sleek and fat, and they grazed among the reeds. And look, seven other cows came up after them out of the Nile, miserable looking and thin, and stood by the other cows at the edge of the Nile. The miserable looking and thin cows ate up the seven sleek and fat cows. Then Pharaoh woke up. And he slept and dreamed a second time. And look, seven heads of grain came up on one stalk, healthy and good. Then look, seven heads of grain thin and blasted with the east wind, sprouted up after them. The thin heads swallowed up the seven healthy and full heads. Then Pharaoh woke up, and look, it was a dream. It happened in the morning that his mind was troubled, so he summoned all of Egypt's magicians and wise men. And Pharaoh told them his dreams, but there was no one who could interpret them to Pharaoh. Then the chief cupbearer spoke to Pharaoh, saying, I remember my faults today. Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in prison in the house of the captain of the guard, me and the chief baker. We had a dream on the same night, he and I, each having a dream with its own meaning. Now a young Hebrew was there with us, a servant of the captain of the guards, and we told him, and he interpreted our dreams to us, to each man he interpreted according to his own dream. And it happened just the way he interpreted them to us, so it was, I was restored to my office, and he was hanged. Then Pharaoh summoned Joseph and they brought him quickly out of the pit. And he shaved himself, changed his clothes, and came into Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I had a dream, but there is no one who can interpret it. I have heard it said about you that when you hear a dream you can interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, Apart from God, the welfare of Pharaoh will receive no answer. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, In my dream, look, I stood on the edge of the Nile. And look, there came up out of the river seven cows, fat and sleek, and they grazed among the reeds. And look, seven other cows came up after them, scrawny and very miserable looking and thin. I had never seen such bad looking cows in all the land of Egypt. The thin and miserable looking cows ate up the first seven fat cows. But when they had eaten them up, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were still as miserable looking as at the beginning. Then I woke up and I fell asleep, and I saw in my dream, and look, seven heads of grain growing on one stalk, full and good. And look, seven heads of grain, withered, thin, and blasted with the east wind, sprouted up after them. And the seven thin heads of grain swallowed up the seven good heads of grain. And I told it to the magicians, but no one could tell me its meaning. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, 
The dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has told Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows represent seven years, and the seven good heads of grain represent seven years. The dreams are the same. And the seven thin and miserable looking cows that came up after them represent seven years, and also the seven empty heads of grain blasted with the east wind. They are seven years of famine. It is just as I said to Pharaoh. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. Look, seven years of great abundance will come throughout all the land of Egypt. But after them seven years of famine will come, and all the abundance will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will devastate the land, and the abundance will not be remembered in the land because of the famine that follows it, for it will be very severe. Now the dream was repeated to Pharaoh twice because the matter has been fixed by God and God will carry it out soon. Now therefore Pharaoh should look for a discerning and wise man, and give him authority over the land of Egypt. Pharaoh should do this, and should appoint overseers over the land, and they should take a fifth of all the produce of the land of Egypt during the seven years of abundance. They should gather all the food during these good years that are coming and store the grain under the authority of Pharaoh for food in the cities, and they should preserve it. That food will be a reserve for the land during the seven years of famine that will come on the land of Egypt so that the land will survive the famine. The proposal was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants. Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? So Pharaoh said to Joseph, Because God has shown you all of this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You will be in charge of my house, and according to your word will all my people be ruled. Only with regard to the throne will I be greater than you. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Look. I have put you in charge over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took off his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand, and clothed him in robes of fine linen, and put a gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride in the second chariot which he had, and they called out before him, Bow the knee. So he put him in charge over the entire land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, but without your permission no one will do anything or go anywhere in all the land of Egypt. Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphonath Pania. And he gave him Asenath the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, as a wife. So Joseph went out through the land of Egypt. Joseph was thirty years old when he began to serve Pharaoh king of Egypt. Joseph left the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. During the seven years of abundance the land produced large harvests. And he collected all the food during the seven years when there was abundance in the land of Egypt, and put the food in the cities. He placed in every city the food from the fields surrounding it. Joseph stored up grain in great abundance, like the sand of the sea, until he stopped measuring it, because it could not be measured. To Joseph were born two sons before the year of famine came, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar a priest of On, bore to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God has made me forget all my trouble and all my father's household. And the name of the second he called Ephraim for God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. And the seven years of abundance that occurred in the land of Egypt came to an end. Then the seven years of famine began to come, just as Joseph had said. There was famine in all lands, but in all the land of Egypt there was food. When all the land of Egypt experienced the famine, the people cried to Pharaoh for food. Then Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph. Whatever he says to you, do. So the famine was over all the surface of the land. Then Joseph opened all the storehouses of grain and sold to the Egyptians. And the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. And all the countries came to Egypt to Joseph to buy grain, because the famine was severe in all the earth. Chapter 42 Now Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, so Jacob said to his sons, Why do you look at one another? He said, Look, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down there and buy some for us from there, so that we may live and not die. So Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain from Egypt. But Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, some harm might happen to him. So the sons of Israel went to buy among the other travelers, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. Now Joseph was the ruler over the country, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. Joseph's brothers came and bowed themselves down to him with their faces to the ground. Joseph saw his brothers, and he recognized them, but he acted like he did not know them, and spoke harshly with them. And he said to them, Where do you come from? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed about them. 
and said to them, You are spies. You have come to look for the vulnerabilities of the country. But they said to him, No, my lord, but your servants have come to buy food. We are all sons of one man. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. But he said to them, No, but you have come to look for the vulnerabilities of the country. But they said, We, your servants, are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan, and look, the youngest is now with our father, and one is no more. But Joseph said to them, It is as I said to you, saying, You are spies. This is how you will be tested, by the life of Pharaoh. You will not leave from here until your youngest brother comes here. Send one of you, and let him get your brother and you will stay in prison, so that your words can be tested, whether there is truth in you. Or else, by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. So he put all of them together in prison for three days. Then Joseph said to them the third day, Do what I say, and live, for I fear God. If you are honest, then let one of your brothers remain confined in your prison, but you go and carry grain for the hunger of your households. But bring your youngest brother to me so that your words will be verified and you want to die. To this they agreed. Then they said to one another, We are certainly guilty concerning our brother, because we saw how distressed he was when he pleaded with us, and we wouldn't he listen. Therefore this distress has come upon us. Reuben answered them, saying, Did I not tell you, saying, Do not sin against the boy, but you wouldn't he listen? Therefore, look, now comes a reckoning for his blood. Now they did not know that Joseph could understand them, since he was speaking through an interpreter. He stepped away from them and wept. Then he returned to them and talked with them. Then he took Simeon from them and bound him in front of them. Then Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain, and to restore every man's silver into his sack, and to give them food for the journey. And it was done for them. They loaded their donkeys with their grain, and departed from there. As one of them opened his sack to give his donkey food at the lodging place, he saw his silver. Look, it was in the mouth of his sack. He said to his brothers, my silver has been returned. Look, it is in my sack. And they were dismayed, and they turned trembling to one another, saying, What is this that God has done to us? Then they returned to their father Jacob to the land of Canaan, and told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man, the lord of the country, spoke harshly to us, and accused us of being spies of the country. But we said to him, We are honest men. We are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father one is no more, and the youngest is now with our father in the land of Canaan. The man, the lord of the country, said to us, By this I will know that you are honest men, leave one of your brothers with me, and take grain for the hunger of your households, and go your way. Bring your youngest brother to me. Then I will know that you are not spies, but that you are honest men. So I will deliver your brother to you, and you may travel in the land. Then it happened as they emptied their sacks, that look. Every man's bag of silver was in his sack. When they and their father saw their bags of silver, they were afraid. Then their father Jacob said to them, You have deprived me of my children. Joseph is no more, Simeon is no more, and you want to take Benjamin away. All this has come against me. Reuben spoke to his father, saying, Kill my two sons if I do not bring him to you. Put him in my care, and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son will not go down with you for his brother is dead, and he alone is left. If harm should happen to him on the journey you are taking, then you will bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to Sheol. Chapter 43 Now the famine was severe in the land. So it came about when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought out of Egypt, that their father said to them, Go again, buy us a little more food. But Judah spoke to him, saying, The man strictly warned us, saying, you may not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you ll send our brother with us, we ll go down and buy you food, but if you will not send him, we will not go down, for the man said to us, You may not see my face unless your brother is with you. Then Israel said, Why did you bring this trouble on me by telling the man that you had another brother? They said, The man kept asking about ourselves, and concerning our relatives, saying, Is your father still alive? Do you have another brother? So we just answered his questions. How are we to know that he would say, Bring your brother down? Then Judah said to his father Israel, Send the boy with me and we ll get up and go, so that we may live and not die, both we and you, and also our little ones. I will be collateral for him. You can hold me responsible for him. If I fail to bring him to you and set him before you, 
then let me bear the blame forever, for if we hadn't he delayed, surely we would have returned a second time by now. Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this, take some of the best fruits of the land in your bags and bring a gift for the man, a little balm, a little honey, spices and myrrh, pistachio nuts and almonds. Take twice as much silver in your hand, and take back the silver that was returned in the mouth of your sacks. Perhaps it was an oversight. Take your brother also, and get up, go back to the man. And may El Shaddai grant you mercy before the man, that he may release to you your other brother and Benjamin. If I am deprived of my children, then I am deprived. The men took this gift, and they took twice as much silver with them, and Benjamin. Then they got up and went down to Egypt, and presented themselves before Joseph. When Joseph saw Benjamin with them, he said to the servant of his house, Bring the men into the house, and slaughter an animal and prepare it, for the men will eat with me at noon. The man did as Joseph had said, and the man brought the men to Joseph's house. But the men were afraid because they were brought to Joseph's house, and they said, It is because of the silver that was returned in our sacks the first time that we are brought here, so that he may capture us, and make us slaves, and take our donkeys. So they came near to the man of Joseph's house and they spoke to him at the entrance of the house, and said, My lord, we indeed came down the first time to buy food. But when we came to the lodging place, we opened our sacks, and look, every man's silver was in the mouth of his sack our silver in full weight. So we have brought it back in our hand. We have brought down additional silver with us to buy food. We do not know who put our silver in our sacks. He said, Peace to you. Do not be afraid. Your God and the God of your father has given you treasure in your sacks. I received your silver. Then he brought Simeon out to them. The man brought the men into Joseph's house and gave them water, and they washed their feet. Then he gave their donkeys food. They prepared the gift for Joseph's arrival at noon, for they heard that they would eat a meal there. When Joseph came home, they prepared the gift they had brought with them into the house, and bowed themselves down to him with their face to the ground. Then he asked them of their welfare, and said, Is your father well, the old man of whom you spoke? Is he still alive? And they answered, Your servant, our father, is well. He is still alive. Then he said, Blessed be that man by God. And they bowed and prostrated themselves. And he looked up and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, and said, Is this your youngest brother, of whom you told me about? Then he said, God be gracious to you, my son. Then Joseph hurried out, for he was overcome with emotion because of his brother, and he was at the point of tears. So he entered into his chamber and wept there. Then he washed his face and came out. And he controlled himself and said, serve the food. They served him by himself, and them by themselves, and the Egyptians who ate with him by themselves, because the Egyptians could not eat food with the Hebrews, for that is disgraceful to the Egyptians. And they sat before him, the firstborn according to his birthright, and the youngest according to his youth, and the men looked at each other with amazement. Then he gave portions to them in front of him, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs, so they drank until they all became drunk. Chapter 44. Then he instructed the manager of his house, saying, Fill the men's sacks with as much food as they can carry, and put each man's silver in the mouth of his sack. Put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest, along with the silver for his grain. So he did according to the word that Joseph had told him. As soon as the morning dawned, the men were sent off along with their donkeys. When they were far from the city, Joseph said to his manager, Up, go after the men and when you overtake them, ask them, why have you repaid evil for good? Why have you stolen my silver cup? Isn't he it from this that my Lord drinks and by which he indeed uses for divination? You have done evil in doing this. And he caught up with them and spoke these words to them. But they said to him, why does my Lord speak such words as these? Far be it from your servants that they should do such a thing. Look, the money that we found in the mouths of our sacks we brought back to you from the land of Canaan. How then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? With whomever of your servants it is found, he must die, and we also will be my Lord's slaves. And he said, Very well, then, it will be as you say. The one with whom it is found will be my slave, but you will be blameless. Then they hurried, and each man lowered his sack to the ground, and each man opened his sack. And he searched, beginning with the oldest, and ending at the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. 
Then they tore their clothes, and each man loaded his donkey and returned to the city. So Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, and he was still there, and they fell to the ground before him. And Joseph said to them, What is this deed that you have done? Didn't he you know that a man like me can indeed practice divination? Then Judah said, What can we say to my lord? What can we speak? And how can we clear ourselves? God has uncovered the guilt of your servants. Look, we are my lord's slaves, both we, and the one in whose possession the cup was found. But he said, Far be it for me that I should do so. The man in whose possession the cup was found, he will be my slave. But as for you, go up to your father in peace. Then Judah approached him, and said, My lord, please allow your servant to speak a word in the ears of my lord, and do not become angry with your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My lord asked his servants, saying, Do you have a father or a brother? And we said to my lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child born when he was old, a little one, and his brother is dead, and he is his mother's only child, and his father loves him. Then you said to your servants, Bring him down to me so that I can see him myself. And we said to my lord, The boy can't leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. But you said to your servants, Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you will not see my face again. And it happened when we came up to your servant my father, we told him the words of my lord. But our father said, Go again, buy us a little food. We said, We can t go down. If our youngest brother is with us, then we will go down for we cannot see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Then your servant my father said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons. And the one disappeared from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces. And I haven't seen him since. If you take this one also from me, and harm happens to him, you will bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to Shoal. So now, when I come to your servant my father and the boy is not with us, since his life is bound up in the boy's life, it will happen when he sees that the boy is not with us, that he will die. Your servants will bring down the gray hairs of your servant our father with sorrow to Shoal. For your servant became collateral for the boy to my father, saying, If I do not bring him to you, then I will bear the blame to my father forever. So now, please let your servant remain instead of the boy, a slave to my lord, and let the boy go up with his brothers. For how will I go up to my father if the boy isn't he with me? I could not bear to see the misery that would come on my father. Chapter 45. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood before him, so he cried out, Send everyone away from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it, and the house of Pharaoh heard about it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers couldn't he answer him, for they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come near to me please. So they moved closer. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now do not be upset or angry with yourselves that you sold me here, for God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there will be five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on the earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now, it was unto you who sent me here but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh, lord of all his house, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Now hurry and go up to my father and tell him, this is what your son Joseph says, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me. Do not delay. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and you will be near to me, you, your children, and your children's children, and your flocks, and your herds, and everything that you have. There I will provide for you for there are still five years of famine to come, otherwise you and your household and all that you have would become destitute. Look, your eyes see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, that it is my mouth which is speaking to you. So you must tell my father about all my glory in Egypt, and of all that you have seen. But you must hurry and bring my father down here. Then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin's neck and wept, and Benjamin wept on his shoulder. And he kissed all his brothers and wept on them, and after that his brothers talked with him. Now the report of it was heard in Pharaoh's house, saying, Joseph's brothers have come. It pleased Pharaoh and his servants. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Tell your brothers, Do this, load your animals and go. Enter the land of Canaan. Take your father and your families and come to me, 
and I will give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you will eat the richness of the land. Now you are commanded, do this, take wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones, and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Also, do not worry about your possessions, for the best of all of the land of Egypt is yours. So the sons of Israel did that. And Joseph gave them wagons, according to the commandment of Pharaoh, and gave them provisions for the journey. He gave to all of them, to each one, a change of clothing. But to Benjamin he gave three hundred pieces of silver and five changes of clothing. To his father he sent the following, ten donkeys loaded with the best things of Egypt, and ten female donkeys loaded with grain and food and provision for his father on the journey. So he sent his brothers off, and as they departed he said to them, Do not be fearful on the journey. So they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan to their father Jacob. And they told him, saying, Joseph is still alive, and he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. But he was unmoved, because he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said to them, and when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to transport him, the spirit of their father Jacob revived. Then Israel said, I'm convinced. My son Joseph is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. Chapter 46 So Israel set out with all that he had and came to Beersheba, and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. And God spoke to Israel in a vision at night, and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here I am. He said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you into a great nation. I will go down with you into Egypt and I myself will surely bring you up again, and Joseph will close your eyes. Then Jacob rose up from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried their father Jacob, and their little ones, and their wives on the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. So they took their livestock and their possessions which they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and arrived in Egypt, Jacob and all his descendants with him, his sons, and his sons' sons with him, his daughters, and his sons' daughters and he brought all his descendants with him to Egypt. Now these are the names of the sons of Israel who went to Egypt, Jacob and his sons, Reuben, Jacob's firstborn. And the sons of Reuben, Hanok, and Palu, and Hezron, and Carmi. And the sons of Simeon, Jemuel, and Jimon, and Ohad, and Jachin, and Zohar, and Shal, the son of a Canaanite woman. And the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. And the sons of Judah, Ur, and Onan, and Shelah, and Perez, and Zerah, but her and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamuel. And the sons of Issachar, Tola, and Boa, and Joshub, and Shimron. And the sons of Zebulun, Serech, and Elon, and Jaleel. These are the sons of Leah, whom she bore to Jacob in Paddan Aram, as well as his daughter Dinah. All the persons of his sons and his daughters were thirty-three. And the sons of Gad, Zephon, and Hagi, and Shunai, and Esben, and Eri, and Arodi, and Areli, and the sons of Asher, Jimna, and Jishva, and Jishvi, and Beriah, and Sarah their sister. And the sons of Beriah, Haber, and Malkiel. These are the sons of Zilpah, whom Laban gave to his daughter Leah, and these she bore to Jacob, sixteen persons. The sons of Rachel, Jacob's wife, Joseph and Benjamin. To Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, whom Asenath the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On, bore to him. And the sons of Benjamin, Bala, and Becher, and Ashbel, Jerah, and Naaman, and Ahiram, and Shupim, and Huppim, and Ard. These are the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob, all the persons were fourteen. And the sons of Dan, Shuham. And the sons of Naphtali, Jaziel, and Guni, and Jezer, and Shilam. These are the sons of Bilhah, whom Laban gave to his daughter Rachel, and these she bore to Jacob, all the persons were seven. All the persons who came with Jacob into Egypt, who were his direct descendants, not including the wives of Jacob's sons, all the persons were sixty-six. And the sons of Joseph who were born to him in Egypt were two persons. All the persons of the house of Jacob who came into Egypt were seventy. And he sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to accompany him to Goshen. Then they arrived in the land of Goshen. And Joseph prepared his chariot and went up to meet his father Israel in Goshen. And he presented himself to him and he threw his arms around his neck and wept for a long time. Then Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die since I have seen your face, that you are still alive. Then Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, 
I will go up and speak with Pharaoh and will tell him, My brothers and my father's household who are in the land of Canaan have come to me. The men are shepherds, for they have been keepers of livestock, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. And it will come to pass, when Pharaoh summons you and says, What is your occupation? That you are to say, Your servants have looked after livestock from our youth until now, both we, and our fathers, in order that you may settle in the land of Goshen, since all shepherds are detestable to the Egyptians. Chapter 47 Then Joseph went in and told Pharaoh, and said, My father and my brothers, with their flocks, their herds, and all that they own, have come from the land of Canaan. And look, they are in the land of Goshen. And from among his brothers he took five men and presented them before Pharaoh. Then Pharaoh said to his brothers, What is your occupation? And they said to Pharaoh, Your servants are shepherds, both we, and our fathers. And they said to Pharaoh, We have come to sojourn in the land, for there is no pasture for your servants' flocks. For the famine is severe in the land of Canaan. So now, please let your servants live in the land of Goshen. Then Pharaoh spoke to Joseph, saying, Your father and your brothers have come to you, and the land of Egypt is before you. Settle your father and your brothers in the best of the land. They may live in the land of Goshen. If you know any able men among them, then put them in charge of my livestock. Then Joseph brought in his father Jacob, and presented him before Pharaoh, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Jacob, How many are the days of the years of your life? So Jacob said to Pharaoh, The days of the years of my sojourning are one hundred thirty years. Few and difficult have been the years of my life, and they have not attained to the days of the years of the life of my fathers in the days of their sojourning. Then Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from Pharaoh's presence. Joseph settled his father and his brothers, and gave them property in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. And Joseph provided food for his father, his brothers, and all of his father's household, according to the number of their dependents. Now there was no food in all the land, for the famine was very severe, so that the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan grew weak because of the famine. Joseph gathered up all of the money to be found in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, for the grain they were purchasing. And Joseph brought the money into Pharaoh's treasury. And when the money was all spent in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us food, for why should we die in your presence? For our money is gone. Then Joseph said, Give me your livestock and I will give you food for your livestock, if your silver is gone. So they brought their livestock to Joseph, and Joseph gave them food in exchange for the horses, and for the flocks, and for the cattle, and for the donkeys. And he fed them with food in exchange for all their livestock for that year. When that year was over, they came to him the next year and said to him, We will not hide from my lord that all our silver is spent and that the herds of livestock belong to my lord. There is nothing left as my Lord can see, except our bodies and our lands. Why should we die before your eyes, both we and our land? Buy us and our land in exchange for food, and we and our land will be servants to Pharaoh. Give us seeds so that we may live and not die, and that the land won't become desolate. So Joseph bought all the land of Egypt for Pharaoh, because every Egyptian sold his field, since the famine was severe on them. So the land became Pharaoh's. And as for the people, he subjugated them as slaves from one end of the border of Egypt to the other end of it. Only he did not buy the land of the priests, for the priests had an allotment from Pharaoh, and they lived off their allotment which Pharaoh gave them. Therefore they did not have to sell their land. Then Joseph said to the people, Look, I have bought you and your land today for Pharaoh. Look, here is seed for you so you can plant the seed in the land. And it will come to pass at the harvest that you must give a fifth to Pharaoh and four-fifths will be yours for seed for the field, and for your food, and for those of your households, and as food for your little ones. Then they said, You have saved our lives. Let us find favor in the sight of my Lord, and we will be Pharaoh's slaves. So Joseph made it a statute still in effect for the land of Egypt, that a fifth must go to Pharaoh. Only the land of the priests alone did not become Pharaoh's. So Israel lived in the land of Egypt, in the land of Goshen and they acquired property in it and were fertile and became numerous. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt seventeen years. So the days of Jacob, the years of his life, were one hundred forty-seven years. And the time approached for Israel to die, so he summoned his son Joseph and said to him, If now I have found favor in your sight, please put your hand under my thigh and deal kindly and truly with me. 
Please do not bury me in Egypt, but when I lie down with my fathers you must carry me out of Egypt and bury me in their burial place. And he said, I will do what you have asked. Then he said, Take an oath to me, and he took an oath to him. Then Israel bowed over the top of his staff. Chapter 48 And it came about after these things that someone said to Joseph, Look, your father is sick. And taking with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, he went to Jacob. And someone reported to Jacob, and said, Look, your son Joseph has come to you. Then Israel strengthened himself and sat up in the bed. And Jacob said to Joseph, El Shaddai appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me, and said to me, Look, I will make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make of you a company of peoples, and will give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. And now your two sons, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you into Egypt, are mine, Ephraim and Manasseh will be mine, as Reuben and Simeon are. And your offspring born to you after them will be yours, but in their inheritance they are to be called after the names of their brothers. But as for me, when I came from Paddan, Rachel died, in my sorrow, in the land of Canaan on the journey, when there was still some distance to go to Ephrath. And I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is, Bethlehem. Then Israel saw Joseph's sons, and said, Who are these? And Joseph said to his father, They are my sons, whom God has given me here. And he said, Please bring them to me, so that I can bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were failing because of his age, so that he couldn't he see. Then he brought them near to him, and he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I did not expect to see your face, but look, God has let me see your offspring as well. Then Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he bowed himself with his face to the ground. And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near to him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and placed it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, crossing his hands, although Manasseh was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph, and said, the God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all evil, bless the boys and may my name be carried on in them, and the names of my fathers Abraham and Isaac. And may they grow into a multitude upon the earth. When Joseph saw that his father placed his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he grasped his father's hand to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. And Joseph said to his father, not so, my father, for this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused, and said, I know, my son, I know. He also will become a people, and he also will be great. However, his younger brother will be greater than he, and his descendants will become a multitude of nations. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you Israel will pronounce blessing, saying, God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. Thus he put Ephraim before Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, Look, I am about to die, but God will be with you, and God will bring you back from this land to the land of your fathers. Moreover, I give to you one portion more than your brothers, which I took out of the hand of the Amorites with my sword and with my bow. Chapter 49 Then Jacob summoned his sons, and said, Gather yourselves together so that I may tell you what will happen to you in the days to come. Assemble yourselves and hear, you sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my strength, and the, the first fruits of my virility, preeminent in dignity and preeminent in power. Uncontrolled as the waters, you will not have preeminence, because you climbed into your father's bed, and you defiled it. He climbed onto my couch. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Their swords are weapons of violence. May I never enter their council. May my honor never be joined with their assembly. For in their anger they killed men, and for pleasure they hamstrung oxen. Cursed be their anger, for it has been fierce, and their fury, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob, and scatter them in Israel. Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down before you. Judah is a lioness cub. From the prey, my son, you rise up. Like a lion he crouches and lies down, as a lioness. Who will rouse him up? The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until Shiloh comes. And it is he whom the peoples will obey. 
binding his foal to the vine, and his donkey as colt to the choice vine. He will wash his garments in wine, and his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes will be darker than wine, and his teeth whiter than milk. Zebulun will dwell at the seashore, and he will be a harbor for ships, and his border will be at Sidon. Issachar is a strong donkey lying down between the saddlebags. When he sees a good resting place, that the land is pleasant, he will bend his back to the burden, and become a slave doing forced labor. Dan will judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan will be a serpent on the road, a viper by the path, that bites the horse's heels so that his rider falls backward. I wait for your salvation, Lord. Gad will be attacked by raiders, but he will raid at their heels. Asher's food will be rich, and he will provide royal delicacies. Naphtali is a doe set free that bears beautiful fawns. Joseph is a fruitful son, a fruitful son by a spring. His branches run over a wall. The archers will attack him with bitterness, and shoot at him, and harass him. Yet his bow will remain steady, and his arms will be made agile by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob, by the name of the shepherd, the rock of Israel, by the God of your father, who will help you, and by Shaddai, who will bless you with blessings of the sky above, blessings of the deep that lies below and blessings of the breasts and of the womb. The blessings of your father are greater than the blessings of the ancient mountains, and the bounty of the everlasting hills. They will be on the head of Joseph, and on the brow of the prince among his brothers. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. In the morning he will devour the prey, and at evening he will divide the plunder. All these are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father said to them when he blessed them. He blessed each one with his own individual blessing. Then he instructed them, and said to them, I am to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave that is in the field of Ephron the Hittite, in the cave that is in the field of Machpelah, which is near Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought along with the field from Ephron the Hittite as a burial place. There they buried Abraham and his wife Sarah, there they buried Isaac and his wife Rebekah, and there I buried Leah. The field and the cave that is in it were purchased from the sons of Heth. When Jacob finished instructing his sons, he drew his legs up into the bed and breathed his last, and was gathered to his people. Chapter 50 Then Joseph hugged his father's face, and wept over him, and kissed him. Joseph commanded his servants the physicians to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Forty days were required for it, for that is how many the days it takes for embalming. The Egyptians mourned for him for seventy days. When the days for mourning for him had passed, Joseph spoke to the house of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found favor in your sight, please speak in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me take an oath, saying, Look, I am dying. Bury me in the tomb that I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. Now therefore, please let me go up and bury my father, and I will return again. And Pharaoh said, Go up, and bury your father, in keeping with your oath. So Joseph went up to bury his father, and all the officials of Pharaoh went up with him, the elders of his household, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, all the household of Joseph, his brothers, and his father's household. Only their little ones, and their flocks, and their herds, they left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen. It was a very large company. Then they came to the threshing floor of Atad which is across the Jordan, and they mourned there with a great and very bitter lamentation. And he observed seven days of mourning for his father. When the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said, This is a deep mourning by the Egyptians. Therefore, its name was called Abel Mizraim, which is across the Jordan. So his sons did to him just as he commanded them, for his sons carried him into the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah near Mamre, which Abraham bought along with the field as a burial site from Ephron the Hittite. Then after he had buried his father, Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brothers and all that went up with him to bury his father. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us, and will pay us back in full for all of the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, Your father gave this command before he died, saying, Thus you are to tell Joseph, Now please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father Don and Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down in front of him, and they said, Look, we are your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, 
for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God turned it into good in order to bring about this present result, to save the lives of many people. So therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he consoled them and spoke kindly to them. So Joseph lived in Egypt, he, and his father's household. And Joseph lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's descendants to the third generation. The children also of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were counted as Joseph's own. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will surely take care of you and bring you up out of this land to the land which he promised to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph made the sons of Israel take an oath, saying, God will surely take care of you. Then you must carry up my bones from here. So Joseph died being 110 years old, and they embalmed him and placed him in a coffin in Egypt.